Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Ben and Woods, 97.3 The Fan. Let's get our heads right on a Tuesday. Uh, I am Woodsy. That is Paul Rindel. He's the executive producer and the imaging director of the station. Good morning, Paulie. I like that Tuesday open, man. I do, too. Yeah, it hits. Foreigner. Foreigner. It's really, really good. To Mm. my... To my left, Benjamin Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor. Good morning, Benjamin. I'm proud of that choice. My one day of the week that yep. I got to choose the music, and everyone seems to to like it. It sounds really, really good. We are uh, all experiencing something. I don't know what to to call it, but you know, right before when you were in school, you would get the um, like summer break itis. Like, what do we call it? We called oh senioritis. You get senioritis the week before. You know, school's out for the summer, and you're going to go do it is whatever it is that you're going to do. This is the opposite. Like the school year is about to start, essentially, but we still have to come to school. Does that make sense? It's like school doesn't start until Thursday, but we're sitting here in class, right? But it doesn't officially start till Thursday when the baseball season kicks off. It's our favorite time of year, and I know probably the vast majority of our audience as well. I don't want to say we're in here going through the motions. But I was not as excited. I just want to get this show over with, and I want to get tomorrow over with so that we can get to Thursday. Does I'd that like make to, sense? I'd like to describe it. We are b- it. biding our time. Yeah, biding our time. Until baseball season starts. That's and right. It's not as though there isn't uh, stories and, and prep to be done. Sure. And, uh, things to talk about. There absolutely is, and, and we will uh, continue to discuss the evolution of the Padres as they get ready for the season. But you're right. There's also that element of... All right, we know what the team looks like. Every the pieces are pretty much in place. Yep. Let's get going here. We we have a we're a band and we're going out on a 162 day tour. <laughs> and now we're just in some dingy rehearsal space just honing the Tuning songs, the equipment. yeah, getting yeah. The, the 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 stage, set, you know, set. That's kind of how I feel right now. And yet, yeah, as Tim Tim just mentioned in the uh the chat, Glad to see the offense is repeating uh, this year. My dumb ass laying in bed last night trying to fall asleep, but like internally raging at the fact that we had three hits in an exhibition game. It's not healthy, Tim, and I, I'm not healthy either. And I thought the exact same thing watching guys up there, you know, weekly rolling over to short going, we doing this again? Is this what we're doing the whole year? And I don't know if it's healthy or not. I think I would make the argument that it is because I made it to about the sixth inning. I yeah. said, I'm effing bored. It's boring. I'm watching. I haven't watched Curb yet this yeah. week. I'm watching the new episode, and then I went to bed. Yeah, I was. I was laying there uh, irrationally angry <laughs> at uh, at the inept offense uh, that that they ran out there last night against the uh, Seattle Mariners. Who, again, you know, they're going to have a really good rotation, and I think you saw some of that depth last night. The guy that shoved it down our throats last night is their four. So. Um, there's a lot to talk about. It doesn't doesn't really matter. No, it, it's not that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter at all. I mean, it is basically a practice game. Um, but we will parse that game out because that's what we do. And we'll wring our hands over it a little bit and, and wonder if this team is deep enough to go on a run and all of that and all that that entails. I did want to start this morning though by uh, saying we just woke up to a horrible, oh, horrible tragedy. In, I can't in, stop uh, just clicking on the stories and the updates of what's going on right now. It's it's really, really uh, unbelievable. Uh, a container ship crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It apparently was uh, some sort of accident, but if the video is out there. This is the bridge in Baltimore that goes across the uh, uh, the river that like leads into the bay there in Baltimore. Patapsco River? Yeah, Patapsco River. Mm-hmm. And the video that they have from some sort of like bridge cam yeah. security cam, I mean, it it completely snaps. And there were cars on there, even on the middle of the night, that were just tumbled into the bridge. And they are still searching for people in the water. Obviously, it's been hours, and and they don't know how many casualties there were. But it's also, uh, you know, in terms of you know transport and everything, that was a major bridge that connected you know two important areas there in baltimore that's going to be out of commission for who knows how long before they can repair it i mean this wasn't just a minor damage this bridge absolutely went down when this cargo ship hit it and the video is truly shocking uh there's one from a reverse angle that shows the ship we're all seeing the one where it's going toward the bridge there's uh going yeah, like, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to explain it. The reverse angle of when the nose of the, the boat is coming toward the bridge, we're seeing the butt end of the boat. 
but there's a reverse angle that shows the the ship lose power. Then it shows on in careening towards this bridge. Then it shows the power come back on. Then it shows the power go out again and a thick plume of smoke come out the back. Um, apparently, this this boat or ship lost power and they could not get it back on course. God. And it careened into the bridge and the bridge crashed into the water. The 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 weirdest part is to see cars zipping over the bridge and the timing of when the thing hits the embankment and you're going, oh my God, man, you are one guy, you know, you're like, you're lucky you just made it over before this thing tumbled into the water. Uh, it is a horrific, horrific story. And of course, of course, as a San Diegan, you let your mind go to the Coronado Bridge. It was the maybe the second thing I, my mind went to this morning uh, after I watched that, the first being, I hope they can find survivors of this massive tragedy. I thought about the Coronado Bridge and how I'm essentially terrified every single time I drive over the Coronado Bridge. Not one out of five, not two out of eight. Every single time I drive over it, by the time I get to the end, I'm like, whew. And it's not that it's not well constructed. It's not that this one wasn't well constructed. But somebody takes out one of those beams, not much you can do. The thought of getting stuck up on the Coronado Bridge in traffic or something, <sighs> you know, Forget it. I mean, it's just, it's my nightmare. I don't like heights. I don't like feeling enclosed. I couldn't live on Coronado Island couldn't unless either. I had a boat that could just take me over to downtown. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just jump on a, a wave runner or something. I It is, for me, that would be much safer for me, in my opinion, <laughs> and make me feel better than driving across the bridge. So uh, our, we have Tier 1s in Baltimore. Our buddy Dominic, one of our, our favorite Tier 1s, he was in studio Earlier in the year, he said, man, I used to drive this bridge every single day to work. My stepson still drives it. Uh, it is just terrifying. Now, it's a 1.6 miles long or 1.7 mile long right? bridge. Yeah. It is just, oh. it's horrific. So I. It was like 1.30 in the morning when that happened, local time. And they said mass casualty has been declared. They estimated uh, 20 people are unaccounted for. Oh, my God, man. So just a rough. Rough place to start this rough thing to wake up to, uh, certainly, and obviously our, our uh, thoughts and, and prayers are with them in Baltimore. And, you know, shout out to the people now that have to get up and put on gear and go dive into that water. Cold and, and Cold water, water yeah. and look for survivors, um, people that are, are going to lose their families. I mean, it's just horrific. It, it's a mm-hmm. terrible, terrible accident. And uh, it's just a rough thing to wake up to this morning. So uh, a good reminder for all of us to, you know, embrace the day, to be happy that we are alive. To Dominic says his stepson had gone over that bridge three hours ah, before dude, it collapsed. Just terrifying. So, hey, God. listen, you know, uh, it, oftentimes when, when things like this happen, it gives you a little bit of perspective on, uh, you know, on life in general. So that's where my head was at, at least this morning of, you know, happy to be here, uh, blessed, and, and you know, it's joyful what we get to do uh, every day and spend our mornings with you guys. So we do not take that for granted. Certainly, I ask uh, maybe that you don't do the same today. You know, you do the same. Don't take today for granted. Enjoy it. Hug your loved ones. All that stuff. Because weird things happen. You know, really, really terrible, terrible things happen. Uh, Drew in our chat says, I drive that bridge two times a day. Wow. Man, that is just unbelievable. Oh, he drives... Coronado. Oh. Coronado. Two times a day. He thinks about an earthquake every day. 100%, Drew. 100%. Uh, it, it's it's something that every time I drive over it, I'm like, oh, God, please, please, please. <laughs> don't, don't be the don't be today. And, and you know, my kids will be like, ooh, and I'll be like, shut up. Don't look. Do not. You sh- don't shift left. Mm-hmm. Don't shift right. Just look straight ahead and get over this bridge ASAFP. And that's exactly what I do. Every single time. So uh, we are happy to be here with you today. We are are blessed to be here with you today. We are on the eve of our sixth year as a show together. Most days it feels like it's been a lot longer. And I think that's a good thing. Not like, oh, man, this has been dragging. But it feels like we've all known each other a lot longer than six years, certainly. And uh, certainly my honor and privilege to be able to broadcast with these fine gentlemen every single day. Uh, and again, something I do not take for granted. Very now, happy. now, what were you saying about getting held to three hits in an exhibition baseball game? Well, yesterday? listen, you know, three hits. The relative a, importance. The of relative. Such. The relative <laughs> importance of such is less than zero. It is. It is less than zero. I like I said, I was irrationally upset about it, as I have been known to be and do, and from time to time, I, that is in my personality. Um, you know, these games start to count after today. 
Uh, I'm excited to go down today. Polly and I are going to go down after the show and, uh, you know, shake some hands and kiss some babies and stuff like that and just put in a little appearance and wish the fellas well and try to line some stuff up maybe for Thursday where we are broadcasting from Rick's Baja Cantina. Exactly. Baja I thought Rick's. Baja, Baja Rick's. You put me on the spot. You're the one who has the trouble with the name. Baja Rick's Cantina. Right. What is wrong with both of you? I don't know. Is it on the rundown? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. It's the first liner in green. You'll see it right there. Hey, look at that. Join 97.3 The Fan this Thursday, March 28th, for the Padres home opener versus the San Francisco Giants. We're going to be broadcasting live from Baja Rick's Cantina. It's located at the corner of 6th and L in the gas lamp. Festivities kick off at 6 a.m. with Ben and Woods. That's us. Followed by Annie and Elston from 10 to noon. We'll be giving away tickets to the Padres Cardinals game on April 2nd. There's going to be Blue Moon, Coors Light, and Topo Chico specials. I'll have one of each. Uh, specials and breakfast served from 6 to 10. That's this Thursday, March 28th, at Baja Rick's Cantina. I think for me, it's associated with Rockin' Baja Lobster. So Rockin' Rick, Baja Baja. It makes me want to say it the other way around. Rick's Baja is Rockin' Baja, Rick's Baja, but it's Baja Rick's. Baja Rick's. The other way around. Either way... You're going to find it there right next to the Omni, yeah. just like a block away from Petco Park. Uh, we're going to be out there. It should be impossible to miss us. Get there early. Enjoy some breakfast. Stay all day. Uh, now you can stick around and even watch the uh, the Aztecs game at Gallagher Square. If you have a ticket to the Padres game, they're letting you stay and watch the San Diego State game afterwards. So uh, you can really make it a gigantic Thursday this week from 6 a.m. until you know 7 8 p.m. In, in the evening and just go all San Diego sports all day long. That's brought to you by Blue Moon. Celebrate responsibly. Now, listen, I will. So are we, are we really, really going to do that uh, sombrero bucket? The golden bucket. Golden. Adam seems to be. I mean, I, I'm the one who brought it up. But then Adam, like, said, oh, no, these guys need to order this bucket. He did the thing. That he does often where he gets the idea in his mind. Was my idea. Yeah, but then you planted the seed I in did. his brain. And, and now he goes, the seed is. Hey, we could maybe film them chowing down on this golden sombrero bucket it. and it could go viral. Yeah, he wants a viral video of us eating crab legs. Like anyone gives a Two rat's ass. Eight to nine ounce lobster tails, <laughs> prime skirt steak, doesn't say how much, Baja style shrimp, grilled chicken breasts, Alaskan crab cake. King crab clusters, Mexican street corn, two Caesar salads, and a fried ice cream to share. I mean, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to say no to it. I, I don't want Adam to, you know, bankrupt the station in any way just to make sure that we get fed this in the morning. But it, I'm sure I'm certainly intrigued by a big golden sombrero bucket platter. Uh, I, normally I would be, but it's going to be early. I was just going to tell the audience, you know, with the Aztecs game being later in the day, with the Padres, we're on at six. Game doesn't start till what? 105? 110. 110? That's you got some time. You'd pace yourselves. I know we all want to go in and, and blow it out at six o'clock in the morning, but you need to pace yourself. It's going to be a long, long day. Have a beer, have a water. Have a beer, have a water. Have, have two water. Have a lobster tail, have, have a, a steak. Water. Yeah, have a steak. Have a Caesar salad. <laughs> Mix one of those in. Maybe an ear of, have street, a crab leg. of street corn. Uh, <laughs> so just be careful, guys. Be careful. It's going to be a long day. You don't want to be that guy on opening day, stumbling around, not getting into the game, you know, all that. So come, we'll have a good time. I promise you, we always do. Yeah, I am playing dad here because I've seen too many people act a fool at opening day. I remember a guy, they wouldn't even let him in the door last year. <laughs> it's just, he spent all this money for tickets. They're like, bro, you're not coming in here. Like a nightclub. Like and that guy yelling behind Ben's live shots. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just hammer. Well, I mean, last year everyone was pre-gaming to get ready for an afternoon game, and then it ended up being a 7 p.m. game. So there was an extra six hours of pre-gaming. Well, right? They knew that well, the night before. We were also pre-gaming for our World Series run last year that we thought we would not yeah. win, we would not lose more than 30 games. So uh, things have changed a little bit. So just we pace ourselves and <laughs> and uh, we'll have a good time. I, I I promise. All right, let's get going today. Uh, we'll set the menu for what's coming up on the show. Got a lot of things to discuss, but we are underway, heading until 10 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. Ben and Woods up with you as we get ready for the baseball season to begin, even though it's already started, but it really starts again on Thursday. Uh, it's Ben and Woods. Let's check traffic with Kelly here on 97.3 The Fan.
Some real nice touches on the new Gallagher Square that was debuted yesterday. Uh, had the uh, the ribbon cutting ceremony, and our own Tony Gwynn Jr. was uh, totally involved in that with the new Tony Gwynn Terrace that uh, was unveiled yesterday in a ceremony that took place a few hours before the Padres' exhibition game against the Seattle Mariners. Welcome back. It's Ben and Woods on a Tuesday morning here on 97.3 The Fan. Uh, Woods, did you get to see some of the videos of the new Gallagher Square, the Tony Gwynn Terrace, the the tunnel with the murals. I thought that was, I thought that was really cool. Now I haven't, I didn't get a chance to walk through it yesterday. I went by the ballpark. I saw everyone waiting uh, to get in early to get a, a chance to see Gallagher Square. Um, I went by for a few minutes, but I could not stay. So I'm looking forward to kind of wandering down and checking out for myself. It really looks like an impressive space. What they were able to do just in the last few months. Yeah, I'm gonna be. We're gonna go down today, and I'm assuming uh, we'll probably do a little walk through and. Maybe take a little video. It's already been done, so I don't know how much video. Hey, here's every, everything you saw yesterday. It's the same today. The, Sammy Levitt was out here yesterday. We're here today. You could also just live in the moment. <laughs> Good. Yeah, just, just walk around it and see it. Smell the artificial turf, you know, see the <laughs> playground, have Polly going down the slides. Yeah, we'll do some bits maybe. Have some fun. I want to find my brick. My brick should be out there somewhere. My family's brick. Um, yeah, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. It's uh I saw, I didn't even see, uh, usually you see mixed reviews. I, I saw no mixed reviews. The only people, the only thing I saw people complaining about was that people were playing pickleball, which I'm, I'd, I'd be one of them. It, now, let me clarify. Complaining or playing? Complaining. You're not, you wouldn't be playing pickleball. No, I'm not 85 years old. Uh, a lot of younger people play pickleball that, now, Woods. That was a joke. I, uh, you know how I feel about any sort of table tennis or anything with paddles and balls you know that you guys know it's well documented our boss here tried to turn this place into google and they put in a ping pong table as another company that i worked at did i almost got arrested uh and i i can't see it yeah cool i'm just if you guys don't mind i'm trying to close some business here oh you what a 14 14 love already oh you're skunking him fantastic i'm just on i'm on the phone right now just trying to make some calls i'm a little bit under budget it's a Friday, just trying to get the last part of the, just trying to get some stuff sold. It's cool, though. So if I'm at a baseball game, and there's some guys out there taking up an inordinate amount of space, <laughs> <laughs> wiffle balls flying everywhere, I would be pissy, too. Constant cutaways from the TV cameras at the start and end of every inning, checking in on the pickleball match just that's going mind. on during just the game. My mind. It doesn't appear to be the case. They, they took it, the nets down. They yanked yeah, the nets it, down. It appears for, that during the game, you're good. The pickleball car, court will disappear. It's simply something that can be used on off days and when the Padres are traveling for people who live downtown and don't have a lot of open park space in the area. The park at the park originally designed to be an, an open area for people who lived in that community, and they're they're trying to do more of that. There's a dog park, an off leash dog park, where uh, you can bring your dogs as well, and of course a playground area for the kids, which will be open both during the games and uh, during uh, road trips and when the Padres aren't there. So now that I'm going to check out, I'm going to most definitely be spending a lot of time out there. Uh, has the, the world's boys. largest climbable bat? Oh, at really? The, at the yes, they had a giant. Like model wooden bat that kids can climb all over Sounds and safe. get their germs on. Yeah, it's great. Exchange <laughs> germs and everything. Now I'm excited uh, to to go check it out and you know listen. Whatever makes the ballpark better, whatever makes the uh, fans happier, it is uh, fine by me. Fine by me. Not going to affect me a tremendous amount, except for uh, I do love that there's a, a playground area. The one before was a little bit kind of back pushed kind of way back by the street and you you couldn't see anything and i guess the video screen is much bigger now and i'm actually i, I think the tiered lawn looks really yeah, looks sharp good. well the other thing too is i go to a ton of concerts at gallagher square a ton i've been to seven eight nine concerts uh, right. out there and it's it was good but it looks like it's going to be even better now so i'm i'm all for it they have a um in the tony gwynn tunnel there with the murals i didn't realize this but i was reading they also have an audio loop playing the calls of some of Tony's greatest awesome. moments, like 3,000th Hit, and you can walk through and hear you know, Jerry Coleman and others call some of Tony's greatest moments, which was a nice a little touch that they added to the to the whole thing. So, yeah, I'm sure if you're not going you know, today at some point during the season, you'll get a, 
opportunity to check out the the renovated Gallagher Square and uh, what appears to be a, a really good job done by the Padres. There he is. You get to hear his laugh. And- it's awesome. Get to hear his voice, and uh, which is very cool, and I'm glad that uh, Tony Gwynn Jr. got to be a part of that. Here's what we got coming up. Uh, obviously, we'll talk about uh, yesterday's exhibition game and today's exhibition finale. It's uh, finally over. Spring training, which started on February 11th on Super Bowl Sunday. Remember Super Bowl Sunday? Yeah. The Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. Seems like a long time ago. That's when the Padres first reported to Peoria, Arizona, for spring training, we're finally here. Last game takes place this afternoon against the Seattle Mariners. So we'll talk about last night's game. Uh, final some thoughts. Dylan Cease making his Petco Park uh, first appearance in a Padres uniform last night as well. Uh, we will also get into, of course, the Shohei Otani story coming up in our 7 o'clock hour. Otani getting in front of the camera, the media, but not answering any questions, just reading about... 12 minutes of statements that was translated by his new translator and essentially placing all of the blame, all of the responsibility on his former translator, Ipe Mizuhara. Yep. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see as the investigations go on and if the facts support what Shohei Otani had to say yesterday, he's probably going to be okay. Sure. He's probably going to be absolutely fine. He was the victim of a crime, he says. He was completely unaware of everything that went on. There will have to be some verification of his story going forward. And I do feel like it's pretty easy to verify, in my opinion. For a trained investigator, my guess yeah. is they will be able to get to the bottom of this. So, so I, th- I think it took tremendous stones. If If there is one tiny thread in his story, if there's one tiny crack, I do think it's either tremendously uh, dumb or tremendously brave to get up there and say, wasn't me. Wasn't me. I had nothing to do with it. Didn't know anything. I mean, our cynic, our c- cynical behavior and our cynical attitudes that we have just, we've become hardened by everyone lying to us for so long, especially people in power and of high stature. It's hard to believe a word anyone says. That's just human nature now. I believed a lot of what he said yesterday. There's still some things I go, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. And I want to I want to go through it and, and today and talk about it, get your opinions on it as well. You got to be confident as S you better to be. go out there and just be like vehemently like, I had nothing. nothing. I had no knowledge because, dude, if even one little shred of evidence comes out yeah. that you actually did know, yeah. if, well, and you're if, done. And you're again, done. like, when do we hear from, from Ipe again? If that's if, where is he? Been? Where is he? What's yeah, he doing right what's now? What's he up to? Did they leave him in Korea? Right. Did he go to Japan? Is he completely off the grid? Is he in custody because he stole four and a half million dollars? Right. Is, is Good he... questions, all that remained unanswered as of yesterday. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can't, you couldn't help but feel a little bit sorry for him. A, that you have to go out and do that. Uh, B, that if that really happened and somebody really did gank four and a half million dollars from you, I would have been embarrassed. Be like, I'm the world's biggest rube. I I would have been embarrassed going up to being like, I'm sure he was. I'm a moron. I can't believe it. You're right. You're asking how I didn't notice. I'm wondering that myself. So that would have been pretty mortifying. So we'll talk about all of that today and get your opinions as well. We'll have our regular features, Take on Woods, and uh, don't do this. But uh, once again, we'll be giving away some tickets to Tom Segura, comedian coming to Pachanga Arena. It was a very popular giveaway item yesterday. So stay tuned. A little bit earlier in the show today, I should give away those Segura tickets. But you got to listen. Tune in to win. Aztecs getting ready. They depart for Boston later today. Do they have a shot against the... The team that everyone seems to agree is the best college basketball team in the country, the UConn Huskies, in Thursday's game. We can talk more college basketball, NCAA tournament, uh, Rindle Report. Maybe we'll even get some phone calls on some of these big stories like Otani as well. 833-288-0973. But when we come back, Padres last night, it was good to see them back at Petco Park. It's a little oddly familiar to some of the games that we saw last season with the lack of offense and clutch hitting, but... Again, doesn't matter because it was an exhibition game. That, I think, is has been completely agreed on by this group. But we'll talk about it when we come back on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
hundred at Petco Park last night. It's incredible, man. For a game uh, that doesn't matter. So if you if you thought maybe that interest in the Padres might dip a little bit after yet uh, last season's disappointment, have not seen any signs of that so far. Uh, Padres interest remains very high as the season gets uh, ready to restart here on Thursday against the San Francisco Giants. Uh, we'll talk about last night's exhibition game against the Seattle Mariners coming up here right after Benowitz's check of traffic with Kelly Danik here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Valvoline Instant drive Through Oil Change, your 15-minute instant drive Through Oil Change. Folks are doing a pretty good job of staying out of trouble on our roads. We have had some scattered showers, so you might find some slick roadways here and there. Starting to see a little bit of company coming out of Santee on westbound 52, but at least no incidents or accidents getting in your way. Valvoline Instant Oil Change is your drive through oil change. It only takes 15 minutes, and you don't have to get out of your car. With all the rain lately, Valvoline is also offering replacement wiper blades. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. SoCalOilChange.com. And Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Polanco open stance on the left side. Two balls and a strike. Pitch from Cease is hit in the air to right field. Pretty well struck. Fernando started in, now racing back. Leaps up, and he makes the catch in front of the warning track. Oh, that's some gold glove defense out in right field for Fernando Tatis Jr. And for the first time in 2024, going to hang a star here at Petco Park. It's rare that uh, Jesse Agler is uh, inaccurate. That was not gold glove defense. That was platinum glove mm. defense, Jesse. And uh, I'd like you to get, right. to get your S together this year. If, this is, if you're going to half-ass hey, You know it, what? It's still spring training for that. That's true. That is true. <laughs> it's weird that we're... It's, we had two regular season games. Yeah, we've already got stats. Like, are we supposed to have Sammy on today? Spring training Sammy? <laughs> well, today is what? Tuesday. We should have had Jesse on today, right? Our That's Tuesday. Spring training. Spring training. Yeah. The um, Fernando would uh, tapped his little platinum patch oh. on his glove after making the catch, which uh, seems me, like a new made me signature move. Now, I will mention, and Jesse was right, he, he ran in on the ball. He probably yeah. wouldn't have needed to make such a spectacular you know play. Now, it the was a line, you know now. what? It was a line drive right at him. What would you know well, about? Very hard hit. It was a, it was a tough play either way. Semantics. But uh, <laughs> but he made it look really good. I'll say that. Yeah. When, Semantics. When he came in, it was probably the, big, the best highlight of the game for the San Diego Padres last night, who did get a three hit and a 4-1 loss to the Seattle Mariners. It was hard for me to watch the game last night because they've already played two regular season games. And I kept catching myself trying to remind myself this game doesn't count. Once you've watched games that count, you get it in your mind. Oh, Jackson Merrill, they're, they're Dude, the, the yes. batting average. I'm starting to think about like, oh, and Ofer, this is going to hurt his batting average. It's like, no, no, it's not. These... This is a spring training. This is an exhibition game again. None of this goes onto your final record, onto the back of your baseball card. But once you've played a couple of games, it got very hard to get out of that mentality. I knew 100%. I knew that the game didn't count in the standings. It's weird, though, why I kept thinking, though, that these stats were, you know, Dylan Cease's ERA, that's going to hurt the ERA. No, it's not. This, this game does not count. And it was, it was difficult for me to accept that I as it. I watched it last night. I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. It was it was so good, like, to see the ballpark and to hear uh, Mud and Don and to, you know, see the fans and, and to watch Jackson Merrill get a knock. All that was great. But then you realize, well, I mean, you know, luckily for us, it didn't count because the Padres' offense was 3 for 31 with 5 Ks and 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. And uh, you're like, that's a very familiar Petco Park stat line from last season. Um, so yeah, that was that was about uh, that was about the highlight. I think Jackson Merrill and look, Dylan Cease was eh, he was all right. He a wild pitch, walked a couple, 46 strikes on 75 pitches. wasn't bad, uh, wasn't great. Right, but good thing is spring training. Good right? thing is spring training. Nice to see a starting pitcher out there pumping 95, 96. You know. Um, I thought there were some decent decent appearances out of the uh, the bullpen, Ben. I really like what I saw from Johnny Brito. He looked fairly nasty. Kolek looked pretty nasty. Matsui struck out the side. Like there's some there's some good stuff there. Those guys are building on on uh, the the work that they've put in in spring training. You know what else I liked sneakily? The interview with our new hitting coach, Victor Rodriguez. Victor Rodriguez. I thought he was fantastic and. Uh, Mud or Don has known him forever. He was in the Red Sox organization, and I really enjoyed their conversation about Victor. 
You know, you come here, you got young guys to work with, and you've got veterans. And uh, tell me about, you know, what can you learn from a Manny Machado? He goes, everything I ever learned about hitting, I learned from Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz. He goes, I, I told these guys when I got here, I'm going to learn more from you than you will from me. And I just thought that was really cool. Um, now, it, we'll revisit the hitting, the latest hitting coach hire in about six months, but I have a lot more confidence in him, and I think they do too, which is why they probably allowed him to talk. We never really saw Michael Berdar with the headset on down in the the, dug, the dugout doing interviews. Ever. And that may have been a uh, Bob Melvin thing as well. Could be. That uh, he was not as willing to let his coaches Scott, speak. Scott Coolbaugh. You know, didn't really hear from those guys much. I loved it last night. I thought, okay, this guy, obviously, he's been around. He's coached he's coached some really good hitters, including Xander Bogarts when he came up. So they have a good relationship. Uh, I looked at that, and it popped into my head. I go, looks like we might have gotten one right. You know, I, and, and just to point out, not, not that, you know, there's any excuse making that needs to be made in the game last night, but Padres were making contact. They only struck out five yeah. times compared to 13 times for the Mariners in that game. Uh, so their BABIP was uh, very low uh, against Bryce Miller. And they had Bryce Miller on the ropes in the third inning and knocked him out of the game. And then, and then because it's a spring game, he came back later. You wouldn't get to do that in a regular season game. Once you get pitchers on the ropes and knock them out, it kind of changes the course of the game. So it wasn't a real game. It wasn't played like a real game. And you do have to keep that in mind. I do have to point out, though, Jackson Merrill's at-bats look so they do so good and so professional. Even Mike Schilt who has, you know, followed him closely, you know, went and observed him in the minor leagues, you know, the last couple of years when he was with the Padres organization. And when we talked to him in spring training, and he was he was very adamant that, you know, he, he trusts more veteran guys. You got to prove yourself about, you know, guys that came up in the Cardinals organization. They didn't promote guys before they were ready. And he was not about to just willy-nilly because the Padres didn't have a starting outfielder, just want to give Jackson Merrill the job. Even Mike Schultz seems, though, a little surprised at how comfortable and how professional Jackson Merrill at the age of 20 already looks well, in and, a Padres uniform. And Victor, uh, Victor, I want to say Victor Martinez, because he played for the Red Sox for years. Rodriguez. Victor Rodriguez said... You, they asked him about Jackson, and you could almost tell that when... He got to spring training. Everyone was like, all right, tap the brakes, kid. It's going to be a while. He goes, I watched that kid put in the work. He earned it. He earned every bit of it. Hey, let's also talk about how, how good he looks in center field right now. He looks really damn comfortable out in center field. So he's going to boot some. He's going to misread some. Um, they all do. Everybody does. So, But he's very athletic, and he's sneaky fast. And the ABs, you're right, man. Yeah, are, first are first at bat was 107.3 mile an hour line drive single on an off speed pitch, low and inside that he pulled. And then I actually loved the second at bat. So gets ahead in the count three and zero. I'm a 20 year old, and I'm even in an exhibition game in front of 37,000 people at Petco Park. I am taking no matter what, even if I've got the swing sign on and they're saying be aggressive out there. I am taking that three zero pitch in my first game in my stadium in front of everybody. What does he do? He drives the ball deep the other way. Now, he made an out. It did advance the runner from was second a, to third. Was that a 3-0 pitch? It was a 3-0 pitch Good that he him. swung at. I I mean, how about that for a little moxie on the kid? Did ground out in his last at-bat. Guy's not going to hit 800 this year. But I, I just have been very impressed by what we've seen from Jackson Merrill overall. Now, he did get hosed. On the base paths, but I, I, again, I don't blame him for trying to get in scoring position uh, with the offense <laughs> that we're running out there right now. But uh, listen, I liked a lot of what I saw last night. But again, you know, if you want to, if you want to be very, uh, if you want to be very matter of fact about it, again, those numbers oh and oh for six with runners in scoring position. You know, th that's something that definitely has to change. They know that too, um, and you know, three. Three hits is is not good uh, at all. But listen, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Flush it. Move on to today. Did get to see uh, Ethan Salas and uh, Leo DeVries both take an at bat in the game. Yep. Um, didn't get hits, but uh, fun to see them. They they brought a couple of the minor leaguers back with them to Petco Park. And did you see the other kid that batted? Yeah, uh, Mc McClory. McClory. Nick McClory. Now the word is he's twenty four years old. He looks like he's twelve. 
I I don't know that I've ever seen a kid a guy look younger on a baseball field than like rookie of the year the movie he looked very young because he was young he came up and I went we have a we're putting in like a thirteen year old kid to hit here I've never heard of him before uh, he took a good rip at we a, were at spring training I don't think his name came up never once. once he took a really good rip at a fastball missed it and then watched one down the middle but I said that's the youngest looking kid I've ever Jackson Holiday looks really young but this kid looked <laughs> he's five years younger. Uh, Homer Bush also yeah. got into the game, left Great field, catch. got uh, one at bat as well. I, I will probably see all of them a little bit more. I would love to see Ethan Salas behind the plate. Yeah. Uh, a little, at least, uh, I'd like for... to see them and only he... them today. I'm with you, man, Paulie. And it's, it's an interesting point you bring up because Dylan Carlson of the Cardinals, and I believe it was Jordan Walker, collided yesterday in, a, in an exhibition game. And one or both of them left the game, I believe, and I it looks like they're gonna have to start the season without without one of those guys. Mm-hmm. And that's not something just get, um get to Thursday. Just get to that, Thursday. Yeah, get to Thursday as healthy as you can. I wouldn't mind them running out an entire, you know, starting nine of guys that look like the McClory kid. I mean the, the first nine people through the gates should get to play today. The the head the headlines right now on the MLB page at ESPN are just a string of injuries. Yankees outfielder Gonzalez suffers right orbital fracture. Yankees LeMahieu headed to IL with foot injury. D-back closer Seawald on IL with oblique strain. Mariners will start season with pitcher Wu on 15 day injured list. White Sox play Stasi on injured list. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of teams that are already dealing with injuries. And you're right. I mean, you've gotten this far through spring training. Just make it one more day as one healthy as possible. more day. To at least start. You'll, you'll have your share of injuries. Every team does over the course of the season. But let's, uh, let's try to start this year as healthy as possible uh, for your San Diego Padres. But you will see Michael King on the mound today. I, yep. I don't think they have enough players where they can just say, we've got no regulars at all in Are the lineup. Are you sure? I, I, I mean, they only, I, I thought they I said I read they only brought like five or six of the minor leaguers with them. Otherwise, it's mostly the the 26 man guys that are supposed to start the season on Thursday. So you'll still, I mean, I, I don't mind Jackson Merrill continuing to get sure. experience out in center field and get comfortable at Petco park, uh, be out in the field there. I don't need to see Tatis. I don't need to see right. Hassan Kim today. I don't need to see Manny uh, swing it at all. Like I'm good with those guys just taking a, a blow. Manny and... takes the day off. If anyone wants some at bats, they could be the designated hitter today. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Uh, which would be fine. It just, you know, but yeah, Grand Pauly should be 100%. getting in there and starting a game yes, today. Yes, some of the yes. young kids should be starting a game today. Brett Sullivan. Today is, is your he day. Even there? He's I, there. He is yeah, there. He, okay, he, you saw him. He got a, a AB last night. Oh, he did. Okay. Yep. Yep. Missed that one. So, so I'm I'm, that, I'm down for that too. You know, you made it this far. You've had. A decent decent run uh, here of of health. So let's let's keep that going and go in go into the season healthy. It's already we talked about it last last night. We did our gold member. Uh, it sounds weird. Our live stream um, and we talked. That was an Austin Powers. Movie. I, I know. Yeah. yeah, our gold member live stream. Better than the never mind. Um, we talked about last night like. Fernando Tatis went kind of running into the wall, and it's like, all right, this is we we don't need this right now. Let's we're already a little bit. I do feel like this team is, and if one outfielder goes down, I feel like it could spiral. You know, I don't feel like we are the deepest team in Major League Baseball. I love the starting nine for the most part that we're running out there. I'm confident in it. I'm comfortable with it. We're an injury away from potential catastrophe, and I know I'm being a bit dramatic, but I do feel like if if Merrill or Tatis or something goes down in the outfield, well, now you're looking at an outfield of Profar and Sugar and who? It's a good point. Uh, we, we talked about ways to upgrade the lineup by going out and signing, obviously, Tommy Pham or Brandon Belt. But maybe the most important thing is just a little more outfield depth to protect you against injuries. Yes, you could call up Jacob Marcy. You could put Graham Pauly maybe in the outfield. But all you're really stretching yourself thin at that point, I mean, you're already thin. You'd be stretching yourself very thin and relying on guys that may not be ready if you have some injuries. So maybe the most important thing is just another outfield body, even if it doesn't end up being Tommy Pham. Is Michael A. Taylor still out there? You know, someone who can play the outfield. Did he not sign? Did he sign somewhere? He, he did sign somewhere. Not, I don't know how I many other remember. outfielders are available at this point, but do they need one more veteran outfielder that they can plug in just in case? Pirates. The, the Okay, just in case the inev- inevitable injury happens 
at some point during the season, and you're not forced to call up someone before you feel like they're ready. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, again, I'm, I'm praying for uh, health and, and safety of the guys, but if one of those guys, one of the, I guess in the outfield, it would be Merrill or Tatis, if one of those guys goes down, that's, that's, that's bad for the outfield and that's bad for your lineup. So, you know, I'm, we're on pins and needles a little, a little bit, making sure uh, that we can get get guys healthy going into the season. So I think it's of, of utmost importance to make sure today nothing goofy happens. All right, this hour on Ben and Woods is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Celebrate and save at Ashley's anniversary sale with Hot Buys, your choice of color, starting at just $399. Ashley Sleep Mattresses, starting at $250. Plus, receive a free adjustable base with select mattress purchases only at Ashley. All right, coming up in our 7 o'clock hour, uh, we're going to play some Take on Woods, chance to qualify for that trip to Las Vegas, so get ready to call in, play our musical trivia game. Coming up here in a couple of minutes after the top of the hour, we've got Don't Do This, we've got Tom Segura tickets to give away. Want to talk about the uh, the Aztecs, the NCAA tournament continuing. It's our a quick interruption a couple of days before they get started again on Thursday. Uh, they'll head to Boston later today, so we'll talk about that and... We will get into Shohei Otani's statement yesterday. What you believe, what you don't believe. There's still a lot of skepticism out there. So we'll talk Shohei Otani and the Ipe Muzuhara gambling situation. All coming up with Bennett Woods. Don't go away. It's San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
sure. No. I thought that you were like all hot and bothered about it. <laughs> that was an off the air conversation. Oh, well, I don't know. And now you have to bring it up, Woods. Well, somebody said in the chat, they asked Sammy Levitt, who's in the chat, <laughs> Sammy, you're the best in the business. What the fans want to know, though, do you fold the toilet paper or wad it up? And I wrote, fold. You fold it. You know who wads up? Little kids wad up. <laughs> That's who wads it up. And then they clog your toilet. You fold it. So are you talking about after you've used it or before you've used it? Before. Before. Well, what? why would you, you why would you fold it? That happens, I, and then I, I, that's what I thought. I just no, making no. sure when you do your business, you take. We don't need. So, they get it. I think we don't. So need when the you fold it, sounds. though, sometimes, especially if it's not extremely good quality, you're like Adam right now. <laughs> if it's not extremely, no, Adam would be like right. no. <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's acknowledge that there are various levels of quality when it <laughs> stop, Adam. There are various levels of quality from gas station, you know, thin as well, then you tissue to... to Charmin Ultra, you know, yeah, yeah. and everywhere uh... in between. And when you've got a thinner version, it doesn't the folding you don't feel like you're protected. Well, and so you don't you, feel like it. You wrap. You wrap with wrap. the thin. No, I've you never, I've never done that before. I've also, never heard of the wrap. You just never leave home without these. Oh, you, yeah. you carry them with you. Everywhere I go, they're in my golf bag. They're in my baseball bag. They're in the trunk of my car. They're in my backpack. There's nowhere I go where I don't have these. If I'm going on vacation, I'll get the travel size, 100%. the wipes. Yep. Now, at my house, you want to hear something disgusting? Are those the flushable ones, though? So, well, so I've heard from plumbers. I have a lot of plumbers in my circle. They said there's no such thing as a flushable wipe. So if you're flushing wipes at your home, eventually it's going to clog up. So don't do it. I mean, like like how long? Because I've been doing it for, I don't know, eight years? Just wait. <laughs> just wait. I've always been. I'll just put it I'll, from the expert. This isn't my opinion. The experts have said you don't crap. flush wipes, okay, ever. So my wife put next to the kids' toilet a garbage can with a remo removable sack. Like a diaper genie, a, almost. Yeah, like but a, not. Yeah, but not. But not. And so when you wipe them with the wipe, which is really the only way to do it, you have to put it in that garbage can. Then I have to take that garbage can out, and I'm repulsed by it every week. But, yeah, yeah, free whole lace. Beans in the chat says, don't ever flush wipes. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Uh, another recommendation is a bidet. You can't. If I had, they made a portable bidet, I would wear it. I would take it with me everywhere I went. Wearable. Yeah, yeah, wear it around your neck. Um, I would do that because the the bidet is the greatest invention of all time. Of all time, period. But I still wipe with a bidet. Right. Yeah, you still you do both. You yeah, do both. 100%. 100%. But Better. yeah. So I, I, the people that wad, like the big wads... My brother was a water, and my dad used to have to go plunge and scream at him. So, <laughs> well, we we definitely have some plunging that goes on at our house. So maybe we need maybe to stop, stop wadding so much. Kids, I'm I'm about to do a clinic at my home on a weekend, like a clinic about it for both of my kids. I, I don't have a tremendous amount of flexibility or dexterity, so it's always a challenge. Just well, to, now you've brought up another yeah. point entirely, front or back. Oh, back. So, really, through the front. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it feels uh, more comfortable. Back to front or front to back? I. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I go through. Now I know that's not common, but I don't like to stand and try to angle. So that's that's how tough. I, I kind of you got to yeah shimmy and yeah it's tough contort and I'm not a great contorter, but that's what I I contort. Yeah. No, I just just go, just go down the middle. Down the middle never hurt anybody. <laughs> but Lenny All said right. it's getting out of hand. This was your idea, bud. I didn't, I wasn't going to bring it up. Oh, we need a contestant for Take on Woods. <laughs> Someone call, save us now. Get us uh, 
ready to play our musical trivia game here in a couple of minutes. 833-288-0973. Want to qualify you for that trip to Vegas at the Fontainebleau, the $150 dinner credit. Got to play to win. 833-288-0973. That's coming up momentarily. Uh, I mentioned yesterday the NFL uh, owners meetings are underway and they Yesterday, they approved the change in the uh, hip drop tackle yeah. being banned. This morning, uh, apparently the kickoff rules are changing, at least for this season in the NFL. Quite well, a significant change as well. Ben said, oh, man, they ju- did you see the kickoff rule? I go, no. He goes, they're just like the XFL kickoff. I go, well, what is the XFL oh, well, kickoff? well, in that case. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, now I got it. So this is going to be visually one of the biggest changes we've seen in the NFL in a long time. Uh, in my entire lifetime, you have one, you know, the kicking team lines up at the either the 30 or the 35 yard line to kick off. And, you know, the kicker and they all run down the field. Now the kicker will be the only one back there kicking off. And all the other 10 guys on the kicking team will be all the way on the other side of the field. I believe at the 30 lined up across the way. The other team will be all lined up at the 25, like blockers. So you'll have 10 guys facing 10 guys, and then the one return guy will be back behind them. So instead of everybody running Running. at full speed and colliding with each other after running for 30 yards and going like a big, you know, freight train collision, they'll only have five yards between them before they just set up. It'll be like blocking kind of a normal play. Okay, okay. Except the guy takes the kickoff and, now, you know, then runs behind the, the blockers who are 20 yards ahead of him. Is it a safety issue? It is very much a safety or issue. Or is it a let's try to bring kickoffs back but, a yes, little bit? It's it's trying to safely bring more kickoffs back into the game because obviously kickoffs have have pretty much, I think they've turned into 77% touchbacks, and when they're not, it's a it's a dangerous and dicey play where guys get hurt, so they're trying to bring them back, but do so in a way that leads to less injuries and less collisions yeah. on the field, and they'll do it for a season, they'll evaluate and decide whether they want to make it a permanent change, or go back to uh, the way they've been doing it, or figure out a different way to try the kickoffs, but uh, that, I see the videos this morning of kind of the examples from the XFL of what NFL kickoffs will look like starting later this year. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds fine. You're okay with that change? Yeah, I'm okay with that. I um rule changes in football don't bother me nearly as much as they do in baseball. They just don't bother me. It's a violent sport, whatever makes it safer. The hip drop tackle, look, I I saw a lot of people upset about it yesterday. I mean, if it keeps your favorite player on the field, that's a good thing uh, inherently. It, it's funny how we we aren't bothered as much by it no. in football, yet when we oh. have it blocking the plate rules to try to protect the catcher Ooh. and don't put your foot in front of second base to try to avoid injuries, interesting. that becomes a, a real old school issue. I haven't heard... You know, a lot of old school, now it's early, but I haven't heard a lot of old school football players, you know, Rodney Harrison coming out and going, they're wrecking the way we used to play football. I, have. I mean, There's I've a seen a few of them I've, who I've, have said it. And it's less, it's fewer players than fans. There is an aspect of it. Look, the old heads of any sport always think that the young kids have are softer and 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 not as good. That's just that's standard. I I used to get so upset about baseball, old baseball players ripping on the young kids, and then I realized Tom Brady came out last year, what a week after he retired, and he's like, "This isn't football. You need to be able to drill the quarterback." And I'm like, "Bro, no one got more calls than you for getting lightly touched." I mean, you got every call. They they do it in basketball all the time. The old guy, the old heads say, "Oh, well, they play." You should see the defense they played back in my day. It just happens, man. Golfers are like, pff, I, pff, I mean, if I had that kind of equipment and these kind of balls, I could have done. You know, every, it's just the way it goes. It's just the way that it goes. And and that's sports in a nutshell now. And um, it doesn't bother me like it used to. But it when you're going to be like, think about how many games were were changed last year, specifically here in San Diego with that dumbass blocking the plate rule that no one seems to have an answer for. We asked the skipper, Bob Melvin, about it last year. Bob, what do you tell Camposano? What do you tell Sanchez? What do you tell them? He goes, I don't know. I have no idea. And that, therein lies so the problem. So maybe it's not about changing the rules. It's about when you change them, make sure that it's clear and enforceable and everyone understands it. If you have to, as an umpire and an umpiring crew, if you have to do a 15-minute clinic with the catchers before the game, 
Do it. I feel like hip drop's going to be the NFL's version of what am I supposed to do, Correct. what am I not supposed to do. I don't understand Correct. what's legal and what's not legal. I- I'm telling you, man, if I was Mike Schill, it would be all, it'd be, and if I, you know, your middle infield coach or infield coach, it would be priority two for me of let's make sure, guys, we don't get banged for these pretty ridiculous rules. I saw one in the minor leagues yesterday. Um, guy was set up, Ben, in front of the plate. Like this, the cleanest, safest thing that you've ever seen. Perfect relay, goes down, makes a perfect tag. Umpire gives him the safe, safe, blocking the plate. Block. Like Guys like, what are you talking about? It, it was everywhere yesterday. So if you as an umpire have to do literally a 15-minute clinic with all the catchers before every game and then go out to the middle infield, then go over to first and third and say, hey, listen, on a pickoff, you can't drop your knee here. I just want to... I might give you one warning, but after that, I got. I'm gonna have to bang you for for whatever. Do it, man. Make sure that that you're not affecting the outcomes of these games. There will be um, thousands of radio shows that that air in the United States today. I'd like to think we're the only one with a segment that talked about toilet paper, NFL rule changes, and has a musical trivia challenge. Oh but yeah, let's same get time. To, let's get take on Woods. Got Jim on the line. Oh, by the way, uh, someone in the chat goes, no more onside kicks. You can announce you're going to do an onside kick and then line up like normal, but then everyone knows you're going to do an onside kick. So no more surprise onside kicks. Uh, That is true. All right, Jim, uh, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, boys. Mm, The Take on Woods, Jim, is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. only takes 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car. For directions and discounts, go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. You're playing for the two nights at the Fontaine Blue Las Vegas and the $150 dinner credit. Book your reservations now at FontaineBlueLasVegas.com. All right, here are your musical trivia categories to choose from. We've got Forever and Ever, five song titles that include either the word ever or forever. We've got Chow Time, uh, the word eat, a key in all those answers. And our new category, Sunshine Through the Decades, those are... It's actually an all two-second song category with the word sunshine key in all of them. So, Jim, forever and ever, chow time, or sunshine through the decades? Um, let's go with number one. Forever and ever. All right, today's category features five song titles that include the word ever or the word forever. 60 seconds to answer as many as you can. Pass if you don't know one. We'll come back to it if there's time left on the clock. Woods will go second. Uh, we'll compare scores. If you beat or tie them, we'll put you into the drawing for the Fontaine Blue. First questions are two second song. Polly is queuing it up right now. Uh, you'll have a, a little snippet of music. You need to give me the title and the artist to score that point, and we'll go from there. Jim, are you ready to play? Let's play. All right, remember the category forever and ever. <clears throat> One of those words appearing in all the titles. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Jim. Let's take on Woods. Yeah, have you ever seen The Rain? Correct. Rick Astley followed up his debut number one hit, Never Gonna Give You Up, with what similarly structured song that became his second and final number one hit? Pass. Which 1984 song made a one-hit wonder out of the German synth band Alphaville? Pass. The music video for which Grammy-nominated 2009 song from Drake's debut album featured the rapper as a women's basketball coach. Richard Marks recorded a Spanish-language version of which 1994 Top 10 hit titled Ahora y Siempre? Uh, go back to number two. Uh, Rick Astley and the time is up. Oh. Yet, have you ever seen The Rain by CCR? But the rest of the answers, Together Forever by Rick Astley, Forever Young by Alphaville, Best I Ever Had from Drake, and Now and Forever, Ahora y Siempre by Richard Marks. I don't think that's going to do it, but let's bring Woods back in. He doesn't get the category. Tricky category for sure. Yeah. 
Indeed. All right, Jim's score is locked in. Woods putting back the headphones, getting ready. 60 seconds back on the clock. Paulie re-queuing our two-second song. Woods, your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck. Let's take on Jim. Someone told me long ago. That's uh, CCR. Pass. I'll Rick back. Ashley followed up his debut number one hit, Never Gonna Give You Up, with which similarly structured song that became his second and final number one hit. Pass. Which 1984 song made a one-hit wonder out of the German synth band Alphaville? Forever Young. Correct. The music video for which Grammy nominated 2009 song from Drake's debut album featured the rapper as a women's basketball coach. No idea. Pass. Richard Marks recorded a Spanish-language version of which 1994 top ten hit titled Ahora y Siempre. Now is the time. Incorrect. Go back to our two-second song. It's Have You Ever Seen the Rain by CCR. Correct. Which uh, The best uh, music video for which Grammy nominated 2009 song from Drake's debut album featured the rapper as a women's basketball coach. Mm, no idea. Give you the Rick Astley again. Debut hit, no, uh, Never Gonna Give You Up, which similarly structured song became a second and final number one hit. Never Gonna Let You Down. No, that's Never Gonna Give You Up. I know. Uh, Never together Forever was together that one. You got two, though, forever. and you sneaked it out oh, two to one. Oh, God, that was Ooh, embarrassing. Tough category. <laughs> forever and Ever. So have you ever seen the rain? Together Forever. Forever Young. Best I Ever Had from Drake. And Now and Forever. Ahora y Siempre. Y siempre. The Drake from Richard tough. Marks. Yeah. Because I saw some people in the chat guessed Forever, which With is another, Drake. Is That's a Drake another song. extremely yeah. popular oh, song boy. from Drake, oh, but yeah. wasn't 2009 or a <laughs> debut album. Basketball coach video. Yes, but... All right, you snuck that out. Tough category today. Jim, thank you for tough. playing. Uh, we will put a new category into the mix tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow. No, yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. So we'll put a new category into the mix tomorrow and give it another shot at qualifying someone for the trip to Las Vegas. All right, Don't Do This is coming up next. Well, how about another massive gambling scandal in a different league? Why not? Uh, we'll get to that coming up. It's all starting to pop off. Check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan.
Baseball season is finally here. You already know we're the official home of the Padres, so be sure to catch us all season long, wherever the season takes you, with the Odyssey app. Listen to us react to the biggest moments from throughout the season, plus be sure to listen to live local play-by-play for every Padres game. Download the Odyssey app today. Search 97.3 The Fan to get started. Local blackouts apply. All right, I will begin Don't Do This with something that seems so innocuous. How could it be a Don't Do This? A Major League Baseball exhibition game was rained out after six innings last night. Why would that possibly be a don't do this? The reason is, is that the game that was rained out took place at Chase Field in Arizona, which has a roof. It of the retractable roof. The Guardians (laughs) and the Arizona Diamondbacks were playing an exhibition (laughs) game. And I guess the uh, the weather forecasters at Chase Field thought they'd be in the clear and decided, let's. it's a nice, comfortable yeah. night here in Arizona. Let's leave the roof open for Let this one. And then got to the uh, the sixth sixth inning, and all of a sudden the skies opened up, and those things don't just uh, they don't just cover on a dime. You can't just hit the button and, like, you know, 10 seconds later, the thing is covered. It takes a long time to get that thing on and it's not like they have a tarp standing by at Chase Field either because why would you need a tarp when you have a roof and an indoor oh stadium? My God. So it rained think about that. and then yeah. they said we gotta bang it. It's it I mean it does it's an exhibition game. Yeah. It was already six nothing. It doesn't matter that much but to uh <laughs> The, the the poor planning on the part of the Arizona Diamondbacks stadium Jeez. and ground crew <laughs> definitely earns a don't do this last night free. A rain out in an indoor baseball game. That is fantastic. Yeah. That is a lighthearted story. Yeah, very this, lighthearted. This one is not. And here we go again. We've been inundated with the Shohei Otani uh, story. Now there's one in the NBA. Now, not quite the, st- the star power of, of Shohei Otani, but this one you look at and go, well, this is massively, massively believable. This might be worse. This is pretty gnarly. It's different because of the star power. Like you just said, this yeah. is not, you know, Giannis right. or something, like the top player in the game. But, but it's pretty heavy whoop. and and tends to make a lot of sense. So Toronto Raptors forward John Tate Porter is now under investigation by the NBA following multiple instances of betting irregularities over the past several months. So, check this out. The game on January 26th against the L.A. Clippers. Raptors playing the Clippers. All of a sudden, all this action starts coming in on the under for Porter props. So, if you don't know what a prop bet is, it is I can take Ben Higgins to have under three rebounds, under six points, and under two assists. That's a really good bet. I'll take that under. Yeah. Yeah. In any league. <laughs> Against Bo and his friends, I would but take that just under. Just like points, like you get a line for player right. statistics, yeah. assists, steals, rebounds, yep. blocks. Like it's all there. So there was also an over under for his made three pointers, which was point five. So if he makes one, over hits. That evening, Porter played just four minutes, mm-hmm. then left the game because of what the Raptors said was an aggravation of an eye injury. That he suffered against the Grizzlies. He did not score against the Clippers. He had three rebounds and one assist. He did not attempt a three-pointer, meaning every single one of those props hit. Hmm. The next day, DraftKings Sportsbook stated that Pointers three-pointers props, Porter's three-pointers props, was the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player props from the games that evening. So the volume of uh, um, the amount of money that was coming in, too, Large, large amounts coming in between ten and twenty thousand dollars on his unders, knowing meaning, hey bro, this is what your unders are. Those bets for a player like that Red flag. do not happen. Just massive. They do not massive. happen. Fifty bucks, ten bucks, twenty bucks, twenty-five, whatever. And they should be spread evenly among all kinds of players. Yeah. But a concentra- an odd concentration around one fairly unknown player is it raises some red flags it actually makes me feel a little bit better about the whole system that they they see they're watching and yeah. they know when something irregular yeah. happens pretty quickly they do now, they're, i mean they're, now here's that's, here's my really question good at that. now you can you can interpret this two ways you can interpret it as john tay porter was kind of in on it going you know i will at the at the the worst he can. He's like in the pockets of betters and he goes i will keep those unders for you so one way or another yes. I will come through on the unders for you. Go ahead and bet. I'm very curious to hear what the on other the, side on the other could be. on the other side. It could simply be 
someone got wind that Jonte Porter's eye wasn't doing well and he was kind of iffy no, for the game. No chance. And they just said, hey, there's a good chance he may not play very much tonight. And they just started pounding the bets without him actually having any knowledge Tough of it. To it's, believe certainly, and- it's certainly believable either way. It's not super believable that the eye injury. He also came out of another game for uh, for an injury as well. This has happened more than once uh, with him. The thing that you you don't want to happen is I'm five million dollars in debt and now I have to go throw NBA games because I have to pay off my debt. Like that's what that's what cannot happen. And uh, so it's a it's a big deal uh, right now. It's a really really big deal. And uh, Raptors coach Darko. Uh, it's a complete what up, group? Dark, Darko crap. You're so close on that one, Paul. Darko Rad- Radju. Say it. Say it. Have you noticed that every time I introduced his drop that I just called him Coach Darko? All right, so they're There's Coach Darko. All right. why I did that. I don't know how he says his last name either. He says, I never doubt injuries. I never doubt honesty. It's a complete crap. Obviously, I've never had a situation like this before. Um Bro, it's that's big, man. Like that's really, really, really big. So I, here we go. You know, this is this is tip of the iceberg type stuff. There's definitely going to be an "I told you so" faction when it comes to the pro- proliferation of gambling around sports and legalization yeah, of gambling around sports. Yeah. But again, it was flagged. They found out quite quickly. Will this also be a warning shot to any athlete who goes? Don't even think about it. We will find out so fast yeah. if something like this is going well, on. Well, and it's greed that always gets you. Let's say you did have some inside inside information. I mean, you could put a hundred, you could put a few hundred dollars down on it. It's not going to raise any red flags. Well, don't tell anybody else. Correct. Either. If it's just you, there's less likely that you're going to be caught. But when all of a sudden the entire network of underground gambling puts ninety eight percent of their money on one prop bet. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna that's that gonna flag. raise some eyebrows pretty quickly. Jeez, man! All right, finally, uh, do do this, and I uh, I love when D-D-Mega a former don't do this story has a do do this happy ending. You might remember earlier this month we had a don't do this story involving a truckload, I believe, of ten thousand <laughs> Yaramir Yager bobbleheads that were on their way to Pittsburgh to be given away. At a Penguins game, and they got stolen, hijacked. I don't know exactly what happened, but they were waylaid, and they had to cancel the giveaway night on March 14th. Yep. Well, apparently there is a happy ending because the bobbleheads Love a happy ending. have been located right here in Southern California. Really? Actually. Yes. Uh, so the organization, so apparently they tracked them down, like investigators tracked them down. And eventually, there was a negotiation team that went in and uh, had to, like, figure out how to get them back from the thieves. I mean, there's like a movie somewhere here uh, in uh, Ontario, California, at a warehouse. They were secured at a a warehouse in Ontario, and they uh, negotiated the return of the baubles. They're going to get back to Pittsburgh, and they will eventually be able to give those away to Penguins fans at the game. Now, I, it makes it sound like the criminals got away with something. Like they had to like buy them back from the, the heisters or something here. I'm not sure what what happened. A recover a special cargo recovery team was able to negotiate the return negotiate. of the bobbles <laughs> and secure them at a warehouse. So, I, you're in telling Ontario, me I can just California. go steal something today. Today I can go yeah. steal something and then I'm not going to get any trouble, but let's negotiate a deal. Let's negotiate something between the two of us. Yep. You, you get what you want, I get what I want. You know, I've heard uh, a mo- that moving companies have done this. They've scammed a friend of mine, moved from Dallas to Las Vegas, paid a moving company. The moving company called her and said, you want your stuff back, you have to pay an extra 10 grand. What? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a common it's hostage fairly, situation. Yeah, ho- like with your furniture. Like, what wouldn't you pay to get your stuff back? And I'm like, God, man, they're so brazen. To do that, so yeah, go Can't in. You make one call to the police. That, that's it. <laughs> They're like, "We'll burn your stuff, or we won't tell you the location. You're not going to find us. We'll, you'll never get your stuff back. Stroke us ten thousand dollar check, whatever. Give us cash. We'll give you your stuff back. Like hot, like a kidnapping situation, so like but a fraudulent. How, how yeah, about fraudulent no? When I report you to the authorities, They're how, like, how good, about that? Good luck finding us. Wow, it's crazy. I mean, what wouldn't you pay to get? I your guess stuff that's back? what these bobblehead people did. Yeah.
Crazy, crazy, that's crazy. A don't now, I kind of want one since they've been through the... <laughs> They're special, though. They are very special. Well, you can pick yours up. Uh, they're going to have a special drive through for fans on April 6th. So you can pick up your bobblehead April 6th in Pittsburgh. Right. And that's Don't and Do Do This for a Tuesday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. Speaking of brazen, we've gotten to the point where either... Ipe Mizuhara was one of the more brazen criminals out there, stealing from Shohei Otani, lying to everybody, making up stories, misinterpreting information to his best friend, or Shohei Otani is being very brazen and was involved in this and is completely throwing his buddy under the bus. Someone's brazen in this story. We'll uh, talk about the statement that Shohei read yesterday. We've got some audio for you. Discuss that coming up next year with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan.
So yesterday, oh, you like this one. Yeah, Yest- yesterday yesterday afternoon, uh, Shohei Otani got uh, in front of a room of media in Los Angeles. Yes. Table with his new translator, brought a a black like notebook out with him yes. to uh, basically kind of read from the script and went on for what, it was about 12? 12, 12 minutes. 12 minutes with pauses for translation to explain from his perspective what has been going on with the Ipe, Mizuhara, federal investigation, wire transfers, gambling scandal that has engulfed the Los Angeles Dodgers in recent days. And we're going to come back. We're going to play that audio. Now, Paulie's done something I think that was smart. He's simply taken out Shohei's part, and we're just going to hear the English translation to kind of put it all together as a one cohesive narrative. I, I wouldn't say cohesive. Well, a little a more a little more than the choppy one that we got if you were watching it live. And we're going to get to that right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Traffic is sponsored by Soapy Joe's. Got a couple of problems here. One of them is this crash on Northbound 15 at Ocean View. Got two vehicles involved. It's over the right shoulder. Also on the 94 at Hamish, getting reports of a collision, not showing if lanes are blocked. Southbound 15 past the Rancho Parkway, stall car in the center divide. Are you ready to suds up for a cause? Chief Bubble Officer Tony Gwynn Jr. and Soapy Joe's is bringing a whole new meaning to being a big wig with their Soapy Big Wig campaign in support of Susan G. Komen. Make sure to visit SoapyJoe'sCarWash.com to donate today. And Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. Well, first of all, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I wanted to be here uh, today to be able to talk. Uh, I'm sure it was very tough. It's been a tough week for fans and team officials, and I'm very grateful that the media has been patience, patient in this process. Uh, just on a personal note, uh, I'm very saddened and shocked that someone who I'm trusted has done this. So obviously today there's things that I'm limited in being able to talk about. I hope you understand. Uh, I do have a document in front of me that I will refer to uh, that will detail what has happened. So I never bet on baseball or any other sports or never have asked somebody to do it on my behalf. Uh, and I have never uh, went through a bookmaker uh, to bet on sports. Um, just to kind of just go over the result, uh, in conclusion, uh, Ipe has been stealing money from my account and has told lies. Uh, last weekend in Korea, um, media has reached out to a representative in my camp um, inquiring about my, my potential involvement in this sports betting. So Ipe never revealed to me that there was this media, media inquiry. And uh, to the representatives to, in my camp, he told, Ipe told uh, to the media and to my representatives that I, you know, on behalf of a friend, uh, paid off uh, debt. Upon further questioning, it was revealed that it was actually, in fact, Ipe who, had, who was in debt and told my representatives that I was paying off those debts. No, pause, the, pause there for a second, Paulie. I think that that is a very key element of this entire story. He came right out and denied any wrongdoing at all, strongly denied any wrongdoing and said he is the victim of of a crime that was committed by his translator, Ipe Mizuhara, who he had nothing to do with any betting. He never bet on any sports, not just not on baseball. He's never bet on any sports, legally, illegally, never asked anyone to bet on sports for him, and the money was stolen from him. And then I think one of the questions that we had last week, and everybody did, Woods, was, well, how, how on earth could this get pulled off without some of... Shohei's other people because he has more than just a translator. He's, well, got, he's managers, got managers, agents, att- all- attorneys, criminal yeah. criminal defense attorneys in L.A. How, how could this be pulled off Cri- without crisis management? Some some of their knowledge, and Shohei is basically saying that when they came to Ipe to ask, "Hey, this is uh, going on. You know, I, we need a comment on your involvement with gambling." Ipe essentially told all of his people. Like, this is what Shohei says. Shohei says he wanted to pay this off for a friend, 
and they all just bought what Ipe was saying because he's the translator, and they assumed that that's what Shohei had said. But Shohei says, I never said that to Ipe. He made that up on his own and convinced all my people, including my PR people who then went in and did an interview with ESPN with Ipe, that these, these were my wishes, and they were never my wishes. From the start, he was being manipulated and conned by his translator. Okay, yeah, and <clears throat> I think there's a, a there's part of that I think that is believable. And and if you're that much in the hole, you'll do whatever you have to do to get out of it. All right, and and that's all fine and good um, at this point. So I I watched the thing. My initial reaction was this doesn't it doesn't come off well. But the reason that it didn't come off well is because it's lost in translation. That's that for me was really the only thing. I mean, there was one point where they kind of looked at each other, and it was almost it was like watching two people get their stories straight but doing it out in public you know what i mean like should i say this this this, or this is this where we right and so but again i don't speak japanese i'm just telling you my initial reaction when it all has been come out so at the very best case for shohei otani he is a, a mark he's a mark and perhaps one of the biggest marks in the history of professional sports right so that's that's one thing. The beef brings up the point that I think we're asking. How does this happen without red flags popping up? And well, I, I don't think it does. It doesn't. The question is, Did, do, do all the red flags go to Ipe Correct. First? Is Ipe the guy that's smacking down the red flag? The hedgehog popping up. You know what I mean? Like, bam, bam, bam. Remember that game where they pop up and Ipe's just with the padded thing just bam bam one at a time one at a time is that possible is it feasible i, mean, I think i think Wouldn't it that is be something that would be well known that he wasn't just the interpreter he was money manager everything his pr yeah his he, he was a manager lawyer, friend his... he was he he was served by much more than just an interpreter sure, i mean he right. became very close and i think and like i don't believe that shohei otani is lying he's some degenerate gambler no, i don't either and he's making his buddy take the fall for him that somebody probably does believe that i don't i also don't believe that he just had completely no idea in the no, dark like nobody completely. noticed anything it's some the truth lies somewhere in the middle well, and, and, and i'm and very confused says, on so, how to get so like there. his accountant didn't know 4.5 million was missing they no did. they did they, they knew told it. they said about it shohei has wired these five hundred thousand dollar payments ipe i mean can you ask him about that and ipe would go yeah, Shohei wanted to do that. Shohei said that was he wanted to pay back something for a friend. It doesn't say it just said like loan on those pay. Yeah. It didn't say paying back Epay's gambling debts. The accountant may have known that something was going out to someone, but it didn't say it was for Epay. So why wouldn't they go to Epay and ask, "Hey, can you ask Shohei what's going on here?" And then Epay would come back with some story that Shohei did not say and go, "Yeah, no, this is totally approved and this is what Shohei wants and and maybe the, you know, may, I, there's a lot of people who may have failed Shohei in this case. I was just going to say, there's a tweet that sums this up for me pretty pretty good. It's in, in a thread with Craig Calcaterra, who we had on, uh, when was that, yesterday? No, Friday. This guy David tweets, there is no version of events in which Otani's management team is not historically incompetent. Either they outright lied or they never bothered to talk to their own client, instead credulously relying on Ipe to provide Otani's version of a conflict between Ipe and Otani. They're the ones that greenlighted that ESPN interview. They made all sorts of statements uh, without talking to Shohei directly. His own team is the one that said, oh, no, no, he covered the His agent allegedly, Nez Bolello, said, no, no, he, he was just paying back a debt. That's where it gets a little bit rotten in Denmark for me. But when you go to, well, he doesn't speak English, and his translator was the one handling all the all the phone calls. If I'm trying to head something off at the pass, right, I'm answering the calls, I'm able to do that and protect Ben and Paul from it. Oh, no, 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 no everything's fine. No, no, it's good, it's good, it's good, right? And And so is that believable? Yeah, and like I said, the best-case scenario for Shohei Otani is he's the mark. He's a rube. He's he's a buffoon. He's a fool. And it's so tough to draw any conclusions right now. But like, do, right. you, do you believe he's just a victim, an innocent victim? I, again, you said it, I think, really well that the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. I I think there are ways to explain this away that make him look completely as a victim. I just how dim 
would you have to be, or I guess how self-involved would you have to be for two years to not know your, they've made so much out of how tight these guys were. How dim would you have to be to not realize, oh, my man just put $2 million on Ghana to win a soccer match. You know what I mean? To watch him sweat out games or whatever. Like, that one stuck out to me. Um, but then again, I mean, if you're a degenerate junkie gambler, you're going to do everything you can to hide it uh, in that case. So if he's guilty of anything right now, he's certainly guilty of being a mark. And uh, But here's here's what got me yesterday. He made no bones about the the fact that he had nothing to do with this. Now, what he I saw a, a defense attorney uh, tweet yesterday. This could be the world's biggest defamation lawsuit ever if there is just one tiny shred of evidence that Otani, because he is now on record, public record, saying, I knew nothing. That man stole four and a half million from me. I didn't know about it until he told everybody else. In conclusion, I do want to make it clear that I never bet on sports. <laughs> or have willfully uh, sent money uh, to the bookmaker. You know, to summarize how I'm feeling right now, I'm just beyond shocked. It's really hard to uh, verbalize how I am feeling at this point. And the season's gonna start, so I'm gonna obviously let my lawyers handle uh, matters from here on out. So I don't know when we're gonna hear from him again about it. So the other thing that people have, have asked a, a ton is, what kind of bookie would do this, you know, give him that much money? I mean, again, one that had been apparently lied to by Ipe saying, oh, don't, don't worry, dude. I mean, I'm, you, look who my look, look to my left. We're good. We got it. Let me throw another million dollars on this game. Um, you know, Shohei's going to have me in the end. So the it, now the interesting thing will be this. What happens when Ipe has his turn with the media now that he's been completely thrown under the bus, backed up over, if, again, there is one shred that, well, actually, he did know what was going on, and we did have a conversation about it, and here's the text, whatever. If there's one piece, now Otani is a liar forever who was trying to cover his own ass, and he did so publicly. If you, if he truly did nothing wrong, truly, like was completely, it, there should be no evidence of it, there will be no evidence of it because he didn't know. He didn't do anything wrong. It does take some balls to get up there and say, if there's one little tiny shred out there, I mean, that's that's not a smart move. Well, as I said, one of them is is pulling off an unbelievable snow job. One way or another. Either Ipe was pulling one off on Shohei and all of his people, or now Otani is pulling one off in trying to blame Ipe for everything when, when truly there's a, another explanation about what, what was going on. And I would think, like, like you said, Woods, that now that investigators are on it, there's digital trails, paper trails, Should be easy. other witnesses, the truth will come out. The question is, can we be patient enough to wait wait for it all to come out? Because sure, it's we not, don't have a choice. It's not going to be a day or two. It's no. gonna It's going to be a while, and then one day there's probably going to be some sort of federal news conference that pops up going here are the findings that you know from the investigation into the gambling ring involving With all of the digital receipts though this seems like it should be pretty clear like well, there, the receipts, eventually we will get yeah. a clear picture of what i happened. mean the receipts will show that otani sent money to the bookmaker otani, we already know that otani needs to the question is can he prove that he gave ipe access to all his accounts and and why would you do that why would you do that? Again, he's he's dim at, at at best. He's a dim mark, and I learned my lesson. You know, I, I I'm not going to trust anyone. And I saw you know a couple good points yesterday. The man has is surrounded by a team that handles all of his business for him. Uh, Paulie handles a lot of business for me and us. And I, there's things I'm completely dim and in, in the dark about. There's things I forget all the time. I think I'd know. By the way, you guys owe me five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, but there are some things. Paulie, what's my ATM pin again? I forgot. There's some things I, I don't think I would miss. Right? There's some things I don't think I would miss. It's such a different level, though. It's such a different level. That man has a crisis management team. He has a criminal defense team. He has a social media team. He has a marketing team. He has everything. 
not one Japanese speaking accountant that could say, you know what, Ipe, let me talk to Shohei. This is weird. This is an uh, there's nine transfers of 500k. Uh, we're gonna I'm not buying it. We're gonna it's continue tough. this. Uh, this hour, 97.3 The Fan, brought to you by your local San Diego County, the UPS store. All locations hosting a shred event March 27th through the 30th. 50 percent off shredding services. Visit the UPS store.com for the location nearest you. See store for details. Uh, Woods has a hypothetical. He's been dying to share. I with don't know us. if we can do this. <laughs> Come back <laughs> now again. I don't know.
Halfway home on a Tuesday, Ben and Woods, 97.3, The Fan. Good morning. Thanks so much for being here with us. We really, really appreciate all of you who make the effort every single day. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle, our executive producer, Ben Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor. I had a couple of texts and some people in the chat bringing up uh, an interesting story and an interesting comparison. Do you remember Selena? Remember the movie Selena? Yeah, Selena? She, she was killed, right? She was yeah. killed. And her manager, her fan club president... Uh, was stealing money from her and found out about it, and she just killed her. I mean, if you're four and a half, I mean, I guess, at the, okay, take take all the Dodger hating and everything out of it. What wouldn't you do to get out from under four and a half million dollars in debt? <laughs> that is such a staggering amount of debt. I've been in my life, I've been like 50 grand in debt, and I wanted to die, just die. You know what I mean? You're like, I, if I could rob a bank and get out of this, I would. Like four and a half million dollars. And you, by the way, I don't think I've ever been more than like, like a thousand. This, and it was because like car troubles that sure, I wasn't like I needed to borrow on. money or something. This obviously like student loans, but that's not sure really that doesn't really count because I mean, you're gonna be paying those for the rest of your life. You right. know what I mean? Like, right. like you just pay it off and and whittle it down and like you know what you're doing. This cat started gambling, guys, according to this this story. This cat started gambling like two years ago. And you made the point earlier when it first broke. You'd think he'd won a few bets here and there because you wouldn't do something where you just lost a million dollars every time. It's not like he placed five bets at or nine bets at 500000 each and, ah, 0 for 9, I'm down 4.5. No, he won a million. <laughs> so that's the other thing. Are there any... Don't we need to look at Epay's financials to say, well, how much did you win? If you were down four and a half and you were just feeding the bookie out of Shohei's account, you won bets at some point. Did, right. you, did the bookkeeper just keep him on his ledger? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? Like, did he get an influx of cash for the, hey, I won that, that bet on uh, Man City. I won a million dollars. I want that million dollars in my account. It, did that happen? Well, I think it, it all rests on on the access that Mizuhara had to Otani's accounts. Because yes. if, if early on, if he lost a couple of bets and early on he was able to cover them ba- with Shohei's money, yeah. then the then the bookie's going to go, cool. fine, go. I mean, he was Keep good it for it. I don't care where it's coming. I, I don't care where the money's coming from. If he can get it to me, then I'm going to let him make these bets. And the Athletic wrote in their piece yesterday – how Mizuhara got access to Otani's account, let alone sent multiple transfers without Otani's knowledge, remains a massive question. Otani and Mizuhara had far from the typical player interpreter relationship. Their friendship featured the two together essentially 365 days a year, with Mizuhara serving as Otani's driver early in his big league career and in recent months, catch partner and dog sitter, among other duties. Key part of the investigation will be to determine how much money left Otani's account and how it moved from Otani's account allegedly without his knowledge. So, what did you guys? I didn't go too. I didn't go too nuts with the. Um, he should have taken questions. It makes him look guilty. I mean, look, it, so many things have happened in the world of celebrities where we look at it and go, "Wow." I mean, there's something going on right now with Diddy that I. Apparently need to be following. He Diddy potentially, you know, P. Diddy used to be Puff Daddy Ben. Sean Combs. Sean Combs, yeah, very good. He's on the run potentially from like really weird and gnarly. I don't I haven't followed this, but apparently I need to go down this rabbit hole at some point. I don't think I like what I'm going to find. It's not good. But it, it's almost to the point where like when we hear something about celebrities, why do we always go, oh, oh, oh. No way. Really? Like none of it surprises me. If it came out that show a just had a Jones for betting on soccer. Not going to surprise me at all. If it came out that Shohei said, yeah, I covered my buddy's dad. We actually used to bet soccer together, and I told him I'd cover it, and we got too far away. Wouldn't surprise me. This is the most surprising aspect if he's completely in the dark. That, to me, is the most surprising outcome if he was like, me? What? He did? No way. You're kidding. I trusted him. I, that's the most shocking outcome to me. I'm sorry. And, like, I just – I didn't get, go nuts, though, with him, like, being peppered with questions and stuff. Like, that's why he hired this 
fifty thousand dollar retainer, you know, criminal defense attorney. That's what I, their job. I, I is. do think that the translation, the language, has part of it. Huge, yeah. huge part. So of it. someone's shouting a question in English, then having to be and translated. Then, okay, so now the question has to be translated, and then. Otani's answer has to be translated back. And when it comes to something that may be held against you later, potentially even in a court of law, yeah, you're going to want to be really careful not to, you know, oh, I this word, I may have misinterpreted this word slightly Correct. here yes, and there. Dude, so it's, I, it's... I can see why you don't want any impromptu. I was, uh, I was almost surprised that, that the interpreter didn't have an English script written out and Otani had his Japanese and was just word for word. It almost felt like he was kind of interpreting on the fly because you saw the interpreter writing things down and then getting yeah. ready to read them back. I, I thought, thought he had an original copy. If and maybe he might have gone it. off script. Yeah. Why, why can't we just read it ourselves just I, the same and, way? And let me say, to his credit, I did feel like he was going to come out. I would like to thank everyone for coming today. And just read. He spoke to the camera. You know, it, there was a couple times I thought he was about to break down and cry. Um Listen, is it also possible that he is a, a complete robot devoid of feelings? Yes, it absolutely is. But I mean, like, so I was I was watching uh, on MLB Network yep. yesterday, and then they went back to the studio that to pissed Maddie me V off, and dude. Dan O'Dowd. That pissed me off. This and now it's MLB so, Network. Yeah, right. MLB Network. Dan O'Dowd comes back I and was is like so oh, confused woo! throughout. I think it was like a twenty minute ordeal yeah and, and the whole time i'm like okay wait what it was kind of hard to follow the story wasn't making sense i was extremely confused i didn't leave that going he's guilty or he's or totally he's innocent, innocent. He's yeah an innocent victim and dan o'dowd was like that was one of the best press conferences i've ever seen he came out dan o'dowd was like well that we're done now I mean, we're nothing else to see i go bro come on <laughs> Come on, Dan. Open and I, shut case. This is not Dodger loving or hating. I swear to God, it's not. You can't watch that thing and then come and go, all right, well, we're done. Hey, he, he knocked it out of the park, and that was as best as he could do, and I, I believe him. Let's move on and play ball. I'm not surprised that MLB Network took that I think it was embarrassing. That was embarrassing to me, Dan O'Dowd. That was embarrassing. There are still questions that need to be you answered. Could have, you could have totally gone about it and said, "Hey, you know that did, that looked like it was really uncomfortable for Shohei, sure. but he did a great job." Yes, hundred like, percent. To just be like, "I mean, look, you heard it from him. It's that was the best press conference we've ever I seen." I mean, again, I and people in the chat say, "I don't think he bet on baseball." I don't. I just don't think he did it. I don't think he would do it. If I found out he bet on soccer and basketball, okay, like BFD, who cares? But but now it is. Well, now, now, that now, he, now it is because he, he said he didn't. said yeah. that he didn't. How do you prove that? And that he was completely... You need audio or, like, text or video or something, you know? Um, let me ask you this. Well, because because he pays credibility. They've done everything. Trust me. The, the news that came out about him not going to UC Riverside, you know where that came from? That came from Shohei's defense team. That's exactly where that came from. Dirt. They're going to dig up some they're dirt. They're going to dig up some dirt. Mm -hmm. So... Which is what you're supposed to do. So you got to shoot his credibility. Smart enough to dig up dirt like that, but not notice that five hundred thousand dollars yeah. is just floating away every, nine different times. And it again, makes according no to sense. according to their story, they did notice. They did, and notice. they asked him about it repeatedly. Except they kept asking Ipe, "What's the deal with the five hundred thousand? Yeah. And she, and Ipe kept saying, "Show we're, 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 we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah, this is some, we're supposed to be doing this." All so I can they think, did all I can think of is whack a mole. That's the only. <laughs> it's him just playing whack a mole. Whap, whap. Every time the call came in, every time the alert came on, it's just hiding, hiding. Again, four and a half million bucks. Now, is You're going to do what you got to do to get out. Is there a reasonable explanation how he could have access to the accounts? Yeah, there is. If they're truly that close, you know, and Otani doesn't speak English, and they've got banking the to-do at an English-speaking bank. Hey, I need you to do this. I need you to deposit this, transfer this. He may have been doing that regularly for Otani. They may have simply shared devices. If if Ipe is doing some scheduling and he's got the phone and like, okay, we're, we've are we got this and this and this, and you just click right on your bank app, whatever, and like, oh, five transfer, flip, flip, alert, yep, yeah, approve, approve. It's within the realm of possibility that Ipe was doing this, if he had enough access that he was doing this without Shohei's knowledge, which, as you said, would make Shohei an incredibly naive, trusting mark, a patsy. He was the victim of an incredibly gullible scheme 
by the interpreter. Is that stretch a bit of credibility? Should there be a ton of questions asked? Yes. Chris Chris says there's multiple former MLB translators that have come out to say they had access to their players' accounts. That, that doesn't really surprise me all that much. Um, but again, hey, man, if you're going to buy that he was just completely naive, that is now the story. That's the story that's on record. So if anything comes out, he's screwed. He's absolutely screwed. So you, you, you must think – that everybody around him has said, bro, you you better be 100%. It's got to be 100%. There can't be one more bone uh, of skeleton in your closet. There can't be a tiny little wing bone if because they will find it. So this, if you're going to do this, you need to be as truthful as you can be. And if that's truly the case, he got robbed and he got rooked and, and he's just a little bit dim. Let me ask you uh, both this question. Based on yesterday's statement, if that's all we're going to get from Otani, is everybody okay with him simply back in the Dodgers lineup, sure. daily basis? Why not? I, I'm, I'm just asking. You know, he was play played yesterday against the Angels, went over two with a walk, I believe, uh, in an exhibition game, and going to continue on. There doesn't need to be any temporary leave, anything you know, pending. Hey, we're going to place you on paid suspended leave or anything no, like that I, I until that, all these questions are well, answered be, because again, definitively, one way or another. Because again. If there's something, it will come out and he will be yeah. punished. If there's not, he won't. And I, you know, look, it's it's fun to sit and say, well, baseball, I've heard the golden goose phrase 75,000 times. It's I. It, What's the golden goose phrase? Shohei's their golden goose, and they're not going to roast their golden goose. They're not going to. He, he is worth a lot of money. He brings a lot of eyeballs to Major League Baseball. Maybe. Here's the funny part. Guess what? More now. More. I think there's, I think this is. This is, you know, no no press is bad press. I mean, if he's truly innocent, Shohei the victim is a huge story. Shohei the, you know, naive kid that just focuses on baseball. Major League Baseball's lapping this up, man. This is going to be like... Uh, it's going to be like the Astros banding together. No, I said the mid-90s, Michael Jordan and the NBA, and just him retiring. Like, if Shohei just up and retires in the middle of his prime... Like, that's why everybody thought Jordan retired the first time was because the league was right. like, we're, dude, we have to suspend you yeah. for all of your gambling. And he's like, ah, we're just going to retire. Yeah, for so, sure. We'll see. It does feel like in a few years there's going to be a movie. Oh, 100%. This, is, this, this is is huge. story is going to be an Academy Award winning <laughs> movie. The Ipe, Shohei, the relationship, where it went wrong, man. where it all, you know, it... Well, Th this is it's, something that we're going to be talking about for many years. And listen, it's now on the record. That audio lives forever. That translation lives forever. Um, and so, again, the next domino to fall is where is Ipe and what will he say about it? I, I, the, the diversity of opinions of the people who believe Shohei that don't believe a word he said is fairly remarkable. I would love to hear from some of you. Our phone lines are open. We actually have some time today, given yeah, that... Did we miss anything? Are yeah. there any, any threads we haven't pulled As on? As Wood said at the beginning of the show, we're kind of biding our time until the start of the baseball season now on Thursday. So this is a perfect opportunity. Join us, 833-288-0973. Did you believe uh, Otani? He's simply the victim of a crime. Is there something more sinister going on involving the face of of baseball worldwide. Give us a call, 833-288-0973. Get some of your opinions coming up when we return with more Ben and Woods after a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan.
Funny statement from yesterday. And coming up, we're going to give away some of those Tom Segura tickets. Comedy show coming to Pechanga Arena later this year. But Woodsy, why don't we get out right to our phone lines, 833-288-0973. Phil is calling us up this morning. Phil, want to talk Shohei Otani with us today on 97.3 The Fan. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? Good, buddy. How you doing? I'm great. Two things. Number one. Shohei, you know, his history has proven that he's very humble, mm -hmm. and money wasn't a big thing, you know, and by the uh, amounts of uh, contracts he signed prior to this big contract. Seeing him on his interview, he looks so uncomfortable because yeah. I'm sure he's very honorable, and knowing that he probably knows something about it, and he's being asked to probably, you know, you know, go along with this fabrication. Second of all, Banks have protocols. I have a, I, I'm with Navy Fed, and if there's any strange or suspicious transactions, they put a halt and they call me or notify me, and then I have to go through security to, you know, verify who I am. So there's no way he did not know about this. Now, Phil, what That's if, what if, uh, is there a Mrs. Phil? Are you married? Oh, she, ha she has, a, she has her own account. Okay. I don't have that information and so on and so forth. All right, you know? so if she if she also had access to, to your info and let's say Navy Fed said, well, this is irregular, but she's the one that took the call because you didn't want to be bothered or, you know, maybe you run the money, whatever, she would be able to answer those questions as they came. And I think that's their line of defense is he had complete access to everything. So he handled all my business. I, I think the example here is what if your Navy Fed guy called, but he spoke Japanese and you needed to find someone. Right. The bank is calling, but you don't speak the language the bank is calling in. So you need to rely on someone else to tell you what the bank is saying right now. And the guy who you're relying on is now lying to you. Could that possibly be where this whole thing tripped up for Shohei Otani. Too much trust in one person. But it's a good point. That, that I think it's the question that we're all asking, Phil, is that, you know, what, how, did, how did this get so far down the road that no one could have put a stop to it before it, you know, the second transfer, the third transfer? <laughs> I mean, just continuing on down the line. Uh, let's go to Travis is on the line. Hey, Travis, how are you? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, Travis, our pal. How you doing, pal? Good, buddy. Now, hey, where are um, you calling from? Are you at Pebble Beach right now, or where are you? No, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Okay. Tough yeah. scene. Tough scene. Thanks for squeezing us in on your golf uh, yeah. vacation. My pleasure. My pleasure. A <laughs> um, couple things. One, I don't believe for a second that Ipe was the only person that could speak English and Japanese that Otani would talk to. There's just – there's no way he had that much power. Um, secondly – you know how much I hate the Dodgers. Yes. Uh, I don't think that they should suspend him now until they actually know what happens. I don't like when sports leagues get ahead of it and suspend people uh, prior to them being actually found guilty. Um, so as much as I'd love the Dodgers not to have him, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the way we want to do it. Um, so, th And my only other thought is, I mean, who's to say that Ipe is not chilling on a beach Diddy style and somewhere with no extradition and being paid off to bite this whole thing. That's so, the other. That's the awesome. other. That's the other one that you know is not. We we kicked it around this morning. Uh, the hypothetical of all right. Well, what what would it take for you to absolutely wear it in in the court of public opinion in the actual courts and say I don't know what the potential. I have to imagine you're going to do some decent time stealing four and a half million dollars. Let's call it. Let's call it 10 years, and you're probably out in seven, okay? And restitution, something, whatever. What would it take for you to say, all right, I'll give up 10 years of my freedom, potentially as a max. I'll give up 10 years of my freedom. What's the number? Is there a number? I, uh, for me, I don't think, it's, I don't think I don't, there's a number. I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a number because I'm never going to trust that I'm going to actually see it Get at it. the end. Because the person who has promised you, what leverage do you have over them in the end? You've I mean, already none. admitted to all wrongdoing. You've spent your time in jail. You have no credibility when you come out. If you get out of prison, I mean, unless you've got like this document hiding away in a safety deposit box, a, a recording of Shohei saying, yes, I did it all, and I am I will putting you. the blame on him, and I am paying you, and I will release this in 10 years if you don't pay me the money. You'd need so many... 
assurances and, um, you know, just safeguards to make sure because you have no leverage, you have no leg to stand on. So I don't think there's any number that would exist. Well, there's, and, but I mean, personally, like, there's no number that you could give me that would make me give up 10 years of my life in prison. None. There's no amount of money that would make me serve 10 years. None. Yeah. Like, there's 100%. just, there's no way. Think about how long 10 years is that you're like, all right, see you guys in 2034, and I'm off to prison today? Pass, man. Pass. There's no number for me. Uh, I, I Anybody that's ever done a couple of nights in jail will probably tell you the same thing. Losing your freedom is the worst thing of all time. Now, if you did it of your own volition, yeah, you got to pay the, pay the price. But to go and wear it for somebody else for money? Pass. I agree. Let's Pass. get uh, another one in here. Steve is calling up. Steve, welcome to 97.3 The Fan. Hey, Jens. Good morning. Good morning. You know, I, I've, I've, I've worked with enough, uh, you know, corporate lawyers, uh, working relationship. There's no way in the world a guy with a gazillion bucks doesn't have an accountant that's watching the accountant that's watching the accountant Fair. and doesn't know that $4.5 million is just magically wire transferred. And not for nothing, um, I'm sure DOJ and IRS and the state of California are probably keeping tabs on this situation. Yeah. So, yeah, I wouldn't want to be a Tawny um, at this stage. It's a game. great so, point. Hey, it, thanks, Jens, for everything. Thank you, buddy. It's not going away. That's the thing is that you did not tie a bow on anything yesterday whatsoever. It I, is not going away. And I, I know the response is typically, well, people were confused, and that's why they wanted to talk to Otani, and all they could do was talk to Ipe. Yeah. I, I find it hard to believe that if we're talking the government, the IRS, somebody high up, high-ranking officials are like, no, 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 no. We have a document. We need. To- we have a. We have an employee here on our side who speaks Japanese. We need to speak to Shohei Otani and nobody else. He's we uh, have taking to get grounders right yeah, now. Right? Like, can't what do we come to the phone? It just doesn't add up. It's it it doesn't. And but again, you're you're now on record. Now the story has been laid out there, and so it's not going away. Um, it will be a distraction. I have a question. Do you guys think he'll get heckled mercilessly on the road? I mean, Dodger fans through giant inflatable needles at at Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, when he was suspended for Clostaball. So I mean does this what do we change throw, your ga- we throw like of- gambling chips out on the field? <laughs> like I, I don't something- throw things on the field, but I'm just saying, is that something that's gonna happen to him? The Astros have been booed mercilessly yeah. everywhere they I, went. I, I'll say this. And and I don't know, I'm sure some people will and some people won't. Shohei does get some Benefit of the doubt. Sure. At, based on what he's shown so far. He, Absolutely. He, he has. Based on what we've seen from him, his motivations. Yeah. You know, and, and we, and you have made the point many times, we don't know everything about celebrities behind the scenes. I mean, the next time you get shocked, shame on you because really? we never Bro, really know. They're, but they're degenerates just like 100%. common folks. They're just they humans. just have the resources right. Right. to cover act it up on sometimes. It. Yeah. But if you're so desperate, like if the money is the thing, like I want to make I want to make more money. I, hey, I'd rather have another fifty thousand. I'd rather have another hundred thousand. Do you really defer six hundred and Ninety million dollars in salary, six hundred eighty million dollars in salary. Well, that's the other. I mean, point if, you, if you want your money so badly, no, hold on. Why not take m- more money from teams that are going to give it to you well, right now? Well, that's one way to look at. It. The other way to look at it is this, Mister. I'm so naive. I don't know how banks work or anything. They made such a huge deal. Uh, we were going to do this deal, and Shohei wanted to be here, but he smartly wanted to defer 95% of his salary. It was all his idea. They made a tremendous deal out of the fact that this deferment was all his idea. Mr. I know nothing about my I, – I come to play baseball. That That's all I do. somewhat savvy. Pretty least, savvy. About money in that sense. The opposite of a room. At least how it works in baseball. Maybe not in real life, Correct. but how it works in baseball. Very, very interesting. We've talked about this for an hour. I could go for another hour, but we I think can. people are uh, sick of it. Well, right now, I do want to give away some tickets, though. We uh, I promised to give them away a little earlier today. we got Tom Segura coming to Pachanga Arena on November 8th, a very popular comedian. Tickets go on sale this Friday at 8. 
AXS.com, access.com, but you can win them right now. Be the third caller, 833-288-0973. Third caller, 833-288-0973. If you're already on the line to talk Otani, I see the, the callers that you can stay on the line. We can get to some more of your calls when we come back talking Shohei Otani here with Ben Woods on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
All right, congratulations to Carlos, who won the Tom Segura tickets. We'll have more to give away uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. And don't forget, we will be live on location at Baja Rick's Cantina on Thursday morning from 6 to 10 a.m. We'd love to see uh, each and every one of you out there. Okay, if every one of you showed up, it would be very busy at Baja Rick's Cantina. But yeah, I don't care either. It's do not it. my problem. But let's do it. Let's. I mean... <laughs> You know what? Let's spill out. Let's fill up all of downtown, and you can all get your few minutes to come yeah. in and see us at Baja Ricks on Thursday. Yeah, fine. By I'd me. love that. I mean, you y'all certainly turned out at our seven mile watch party beyond every um, I like uh, expectation and imagination I had. I mean, I thought at. We might actually get a bunch of people there. I mean, About we could, 30. We could have, There's a pretty large, uh, like, concrete area outside of Baja Ricks, like, yeah. near the trolley line right there. Like, I want that place flooded. I want us to have to set up extra speakers there so that everyone can hear the show. I want Ben to do a stage dive. I want news copters to be, like, circling above going, what's going on downtown <laughs> with this giant crowd at 6 a.m.? All right, now we're, uh, now we're setting expectations yeah, too high. I kept, I kept I'm just them, saying that's what I want. It's not my expectation. Well, I kept them low. For seven mile, and they were tenfold, literally tenfold. Uh, what I, I was going to say, at least it was at least times. five to to- ten times yeah. what I expected. It was, it was amazing. You guys are amazing out there. So we'll see you Thursday morning at Baja Rick's Cantina, six to ten, 10 a.m. Annie and Elston, ten to noon. Going to get back to your uh, calls. We had a lot of interesting uh, people want to chat about Shohei Otani and the uh, the statement that he made yesterday. Whether you believe it. Or you don't believe it. First, this hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Cash in on basketball's big moments with Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Use code KWFN for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And we'll be back with phone calls. Real, real quick, somebody after in our chat. Paul. I just want to make a note. Somebody says, uh, we guys have some merch there for sale. We will not have any merch there for sale. If you want something in particular, you can go on our website and get it there. But we will have, I don't know, 8 to 10 uh, new T-shirts, new designs that we're just going to give away. Not even for sale. If you want to pay us, you can, but yeah. you don't have to. We prefer to just give them to you. But if you want to give us money. If you want to wire us. you, know. you want to wa- Yeah, wire us money. That's great. Are we allowed to buy you guys shots? Absolutely. <laughs> Adam wants everybody to know they have 97.3 The Fan shirts to give away as well. We Adam do. may be, may not be happy if we actually take the shots, but you're certainly allowed to buy them. Yeah. Can we yeah. take shots instead of the golden you won't bucket get in trouble. shower I'm not he wants to buy in trouble. I won't get in any trouble. If you take shots? No. On the air? No. Adam would probably not approve of that. I, we've done it before. And he hasn't been happy about it before. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't remember that. You don't remember <laughs> no. that? No. Because you were taking the shots. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> I, I mean, almost every time. I didn't get hammered. I've never been hammered on the there's, air. There's, no, way, there's ways around it. There's it, ways to do it. You. I want to do a shot show, with our fun. audience. You can do it 10.01 a.m. Yeah, my do, dad? You, you do it on camera in the middle yeah. of the show. Maybe I'm, go. Of, I'm 48 years old. You can discreetly do it during the break. Doing key bumps maybe. over there on Kelly. Like, <laughs> hang on. Like tying off the needle or anything. Like that I would get. Like, hey, you can't b- do blow on the air. Man. Right, Adam says all good. Shots on opening day. Shots, yeah. Shots. You know, stay on my business. Lobster tails. Don't worry and about shots. what I'm doing. You got over in trouble here. at the uh, extravaganza because you were. Who did? You. You. I did? Yes. What did I do? You were you doing were shots of screwball on, on the air, on, the air. on camera. We had a whole discussion about it. Well, said, hey, we, just go over there and do it if you're going to do oh, it. Oh, boy, with him. Discreet. Discre- discretion oh, hey, is the better part Adam. of that valor. Was, that was JR. <sighs> well, okay, maybe it's because we're in the building. Maybe. Now we're out of the building. I get to do whatever I want. After 9 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> right? 10 a.m. the show. I don't know. Like legally, when they start serving, even oh, I don't either. In some places as well. Yeah, don't buy me illegal shots. <laughs> legal shots only. Uh, legal shots. You can only. have all the wheatgrass shots you'd like. Yes. In the morning. All right, let's check traffic. Then we'll get back out to these phone calls. Eight three three two eight eight zero ninety seven three. More after Kelly here on ninety seven three The Fan. From the ninety seven three The Fan Traffic Center. Here's Kelly Davick. Several crashes to mention here. Northbound 15 past El Cajon Boulevard. Two cars over to the right shoulder. Also an accident North 163 at Balboa. Vehicle in the center divide. One over to the right shoulder. And two vehicle accident westbound. Eight before Taylor Street. Always a tricky spot. They are over to the right shoulder. I'm Kelly Danick with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station. 97.3 The Fan. 
This topic, you can tell, has got uh, legs. Yeah. You know what that means, Woods, when a topic has legs? I will absolutely come across the table <laughs> and just <laughs> strangle you to death. Let's go out to uh, Luis. You're next up with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. I got in trouble when I tried to. He did. Ben explained what legs Scr- Legs, a scrum, all kinds of <laughs> Do you know what news is, moron? Luis, good morning. Welcome to 97.3 The Fan. You heard of a headline? <laughs> what's going on, guys? What's going on? Hey, buddy. You got you. You guys got me? Yeah, yeah you're on. You. Go yeah. ahead. Two. It, it, it's pretty much, I just got a little funny take, man. We know nothing's going to happen to Shohei. Yeah. And the best thing that's about all this is that we're going to get Charlie Hustle back. He's going to get reinstated. Everything's going to be great. He's going to go to the Hall of Fame. Everything's going to be good. He, did, like, he kind of did us a favor. We're going to get Pete Rose back. You How's think that? so? You think so? I mean, if, if Shohei gets away with this, Pete has to get away with it too, man. I mean, it, I mean I, I'm sure Pete Rose is a little bit more blatant. Yeah, a lot more. But show him, man. I mean, four million dollars. It's a lot of dough, literally under your nose. You, 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 I mean, ugh, I mean, I don't know, man. Even I'm not that dumb. So I'm having Even a. Home, I, I, thank you for the call, and I, I've your take is not um, one that I haven't seen a billion times in the last few weeks. It's hard to, for me at least, to make the connection between the two. It just is, and and if they did find a ledger of Shohei Otani's, you know. I bet on the I bet on the Angels to win when I pitched and yeah then he's done he's got they they would have to throw him out of baseball if that happened agreed like that's there's no they make no bones about it if they found the kind of evidence on Shohei that they had on Pete Rose he's out of the game he's gone he's back playing in Japan or whatever like he's done for his contract voided or whatever he's out they cannot skirt that line in Major League Baseball if they find any bit of evidence that he bet on baseball. Whether to win or lose, the, the same rules need to apply. I still don't think they will reinstate Pete Rose. Now, again, with Pete Rose. E- even if they determine that Shohei was paying off Ipe's gambling still debts, not going which to, is right. possibly a crime, right? I, I don't think that that rises to the level of major suspension yeah. from the game of baseball. It doesn't impact the credibility of the sport. Right. If someone else was doing something, especially potentially without his knowledge, and he decided, I'm going to help this guy out. He shouldn't have done it, but it's not something that Rob Manfred probably would, sits up at night worrying about that, you know, other people. Now, Ipe was also in in the sport, but as a translator, an interpreter, I, I don't think he's the kind of person yeah. that the commissioner is necessarily – you know, wringing his hands about, oh, you know, they fire him, he's out of the game, that's all you can do with that. And I do think that Pete's denial for so long, you know, is of course. is what, what... But again, if that was your rule, I don't know if even if he admitted to it day one, yeah, well, you got me, you got me. Oh, uh, I do. They, I, I think... You think they would have reinstated I if, him? I think if Pete Rose was immediately contrite and forthright about what he had done, and how he let it get out of control, and that he then sought help and became an advocate, like, you know, fighting against some of the dangers of gambling, that, yeah, he would have been maybe 10 years, 15 years, but eventually they would have reversed course and let him into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I maybe. think it was his his rigidity, his stubbornness about it all, and just G- Pete's just general just unsavoriness <laughs> that, that has worked against him for so That's many years. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. And by the way, when I see in the chat, Pete lost 40 years of life. No, no, he didn't. No, he's it's just lied. not in the Hall of Fame. He didn't have to go to jail or anything. I mean, he might have for tax evasion at some point, but that's that's totally different. <laughs> he, yeah, the Hall of Fame is a is a privilege. And it, it honestly, it's really nothing is taken away from Pete's career. We all, no. as baseball fans, Absolutely we all know how many hits hitter. he has, yeah, how great of a hitter he was. Whether or, whether or not there's a, a plaque in a room in a – that quite frankly, most of us will never visit in our lifetime in Cooperstown, New York, doesn't change his accomplishments Correct. or his career. So we're really just debating an idea yeah. at this point, yeah, for sure. a perception. Uh, for Shohei, though, like his livelihood and his rest of his baseball career, that's different. Well, that's and I, big, and and that's something that is that is currently important to discuss. Well, and I, you know, listen, I, I I think the same can be said for Fernando. You know, and and his his missteps. 
uh, if you will, Ben. I mean, could could something like that keep him out of the Hall of Fame? Yeah, absolutely it could. Um, you know, you still got to put up those massive numbers over the next 10, 15 years, so that hasn't happened yet, maybe getting a little ahead of myself. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the when that happened with Fernando, that was the first thing I thought of. I was like, well, well there, there goes that. You know, there goes that, which I, is a, I, a I do wonder. You wonder how it's going to change. It's definitely different when you find out at the end of someone's career with massive numbers that then you kind of assume they've been doing it the whole time. Now, now, Fernando hadn't put up almost any numbers yet. Yeah. And if he still goes on and puts them up, will they have more credibility than some of the other guys? Just because someone makes a mistake once doesn't mean they then continue to make that same mistake. In fact, you can make the argument that that person is now less likely. Well, they're going to get tested more. And, yeah, to, and... to actually be using steroids than anyone else going forward, that he may be the cleanest player sure. going forward. But that's that's a different argument for a different day. Let's go to, uh, I think it's Robert. Robert, you uh, you there on 97.3 The Fan? Is that me you're talking yeah, to? Yeah, right who's now? this? Hey, it's Robert. It is Robert. Hi, yep. Robert. Hey, um, how you doing? Good. Hey, uh, I, I got two things to talk to you about. That Seven Mile Casino does not have a buffet. No, there is no buffet there, my friend, but they do have delicious food. But, but, but you guys advertise no. a buffet Saturday mm. Sunday between 9 a.m. No, no, and brunch. 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 Yeah, now, a, lot of, a lot of brunches are buffets, uh, but this is just they a... Don't, they don't have a buffet. They don't have brunch. They have brunch. Yeah, they have brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. They <laughs> do. There is I've brunch. been there. It's very good. I promise you. But it's not a buffet. You order off the menu. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. okay. All That's right. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Nick Sing, do you think these Padre games this last season were... All the games were sold out. Do you think we're going to have that trouble again this year? Oh, like, do you think that a lot of games will sell out this year? I, no. Do you, do you think that they're, they're going to have all these sellouts? Yes. Yeah. They will have a lot of sellouts again this season. I do think as the season goes on, if they struggle again, you'll you'll see the last three or four months. We'll probably have quite a few less than we did last year. If they are playing well and in playoff contention, you'll probably have – sellouts throughout the, the course of the entire season. Now, not every single game do I expect to be sold out. Not every game was sold out last year, but there'll be a, a large percentage of sellouts, weekend games, giveaway games. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, that's not changing this year in my estimation. They already sold out season tickets, and that's, that's the first sign that they're going to have a lot of sellouts this year. Yeah, for sure. I think we're done with calls probably. Are we? On the day, I would say. I, I mean, you know. Probably a good idea. <laughs> Stop telling people there's a buffet, Woods, but there's not. I don't say, I never said buffet. I said brunch, dude. Brunch, not buffet. Brunch. Robert, I'm I'll a... say it twice, dude. I'm not, uh, I'm not yelling at you, Robert. Just an old throwback to an old bit of me screaming at someone. You actually get better food when you order off a menu. I, I when agree. When it's just sitting... I, everyone loves a good all-you-can-eat buffet, but yeah. it's just sitting there in those trays, and it's, it's never it's never the best version of... Have you ever gone through a buffet and gone, that was the best <laughs> waffle I've ever had in my no. life that was just no. steaming there for the last two hours? I, I, I know. My buffet <laughs> fandom started here, and it is about here now. The great selling point of the buffet is quantity. If you just want to eat and yeah. eat and eat forever, the buffet is great. If you're looking for quality food, though, you, you want to be ordering off the menu. Have you ever done this? The uh, pandemic opened a lot of eyes. Yes, to the, to the buffet. Like, <laughs> look, I, it was sad to see places like Soup Plantation yes. go away. I, it was very sad. I but have, you also had to go, man, we really were doing that, huh? Yeah. We, we really, really were scratching our butt and then going in and grabbing <laughs> that thing. And then the other guy did it. Yes. Have you ever gone, like, hotel, whatever, and you have the choice where you can either do the buffet or you can order off the menu. I feel like I always pick the buffet at a hotel. Most people, I feel like I Most do. people do. I have seen, though. Have you ever ordered something off the menu that is available in the buffet just because you want the better version of it? Like they have Ooh, an omelet like in the buffet, but he's like, no, I'd like a fresh omelet. Yeah, I get a fresh off the omelet. menu instead. That's like a hack. It's a hack. Yeah, it's you want it, you want it cooked All just right. for you. <laughs> I'd like a thick piece, please. You know, dime. That's, uh, old is that old, old country, country buffet? buffet. Yeah. Is it still hot out there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, rain's coming though. I hear, Mister Carving Guy. That's nice. What grade are you in in school, little girl? <laughs> <laughs>
Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's a little hungry. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, man. I never, never. He won't give you a thick piece because dime size are actually more tender. Would that be all right? That's the closing question right there. Would that be all right? Well, I, I mean, the thicker the piece of meat, the more you have to chew. That's, I mean, that makes a lot of sense to hey, me, actually. And you can come back for more. Okay. How's that sound? That's why they shave the roast beef on your sandwich. That's right. How's that sound? This clo- the guy's a closer. It's tender. Yeah. How's that? Cl- how's that sound to you? Sounds good. Uh, All right. Sign here. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take <laughs> okay. one more call. Okay. It's baseball Nick. All right. Baseball uh, Nick. I swear to God, it. if he starts talking about buffets, lack hey, thereof. This is nice. Diego said Woods <laughs> literally looks like a buffet-looking fella. That's not very nice, Diego. I can't Jeez. see your picture. I bet you're Diego Gonzalez in the chat. I bet you're not slim. That is my guess. I bet you're also not a slim man. Nick, good morning hurt, to you. Hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, hurt. I'll hug you when I see you, Diego. Gosh, dang, dude. Good morning, guys. So mean. Morning. You got anything mean to say, Nick? Yeah, yeah you want to talk about my clothes or anything? Or <laughs> You're off the hook, Woods. Thanks, You're off man. The hook. Appreciate it. I, I do have a question, and I, I apologize if you guys talked about this already. Um, I'm just hopping in here. But it's a, it's on the Otani stuff. I can, I can come up with something else if you're tired of it. No, go ahead. We all, you only got like 10 seconds, so. All right. Uh, my question is, when they hired that crisis aversion guy yeah. that's hired by Otani's camp, I, was, I went back and read that ESPN article. They quote Otani directly. They did. Not through the They did. They so, did. They is did. That, is that going to be ignored? Are, is, are they going to ignore that and say, oh, no, we, we messed it up? Because you can call the interpreter a liar, but they quoted him directly and he hired them so i'm wondering what do you guys think i i did see that i gotta find that again that was from the original espn article is that right where they what, quoted was was that direct quote though via right. interpreter via, was it via <laughs> ipe mizuhara yeah. or was it via someone else that i think that again remains a question that that no one knows the answer to yet and we're hopefully going to find out uh, in the coming days weeks and months all right we're going to take a time out paulie's got some headlines ryan will report final hour of better woods ahead on 97.3 the fan
We are your San Diego sports buffet here on 97.3 The Fan. We're more like a brunch. Just choose your items. That was so funny. All inclusive, one price, and uh, enjoy your yeah, entire meal here. Free. Zero dollars. That's true. Costs you are brunch. It's the, the lowest price buffet you're ever going to find. And, and you've got all kinds of different options. There's Ben and Woods with Paul. Yep. There's Annie and Elston with Brayden. Yep. There's Scraby, Gwyn and Chris in the afternoons. You've got Sammy Levitt. Uh, you've got all kinds of different buffet options here on 97.3 The Fan. And again, we don't charge a dollar for any of it. Not one dollar. You don't get a better deal than that. It's on the house. All right, welcome back. Final hour of Ben and Woods uh, here on 97.3 The Fan. We are just two days away from... Opening day tomorrow is our sixth year anniversary yes. on the air Crazy. of our first show, which means today completes six years of Ben and Woods program. Wow. So tomorrow. And we actually start our seventh. seventh year of broadcasting tomorrow on the show. Pretty nuts. Since that is the six year anniversary. So congratulations to both of you on making it six years with the same radio show. This is something you don't see a lot in this business. It's a uh, it's a an accomplishment. Um, Congratulations! I feel like so many shows are either like in the one to two to yeah. three year range, or it's like fifteen yeah. to oh, yeah. twenty plus yeah. years. Yeah. So, yeah. essentially, what Paul is saying, you are now stuck with us for the next couple of decades. <laughs> well, I mean, at least the next couple years. We only have two and a half years left right. on our deal. We're starting that. Well, always this now. <laughs> They don't always Michael's stay like, on the, oh. they don't always stay on the same station. <laughs> no, the whole I mean time. when you we do well, we, we're already on our second station. When you so. do well, other stations are interested in you. And listen, you know, it's the it, curse of success. It is as loyal as we are. You know, I did just see an article. It's funny that you bring that up. There's a funny. Uh, there's a, it's a good transition. I just saw this on uh, Twitter. Somebody had written an article, Benjamin, uh, about emotional salary, and it's from a. Uh, it's from Leadership Now is the magazine or the, uh, the, the website. It says, forget the paycheck. Employees really want to raise an emotional salary. It's time to inject the workforce with a healthy dose of camaraderie and fulfillment. And it starts with God. upping employees' emotional salary. And I tweeted it at him. Don't get any ideas. I, am, yeah, I was going to say, this sounds like it was written by some, some manager. manager. I have plenty of emotional salary. I don't need any more. Emotional salary impact. Yeah, I love that it starts with forget the paycheck. Like a guy's going to come in and be like, look, money's fine. I needed to pay the bills. I want more pizza parties here. And if we could do a ping pong table, and that's what I really, I'm longing for more camaraderie uh, at work. If you're smart, you'll take five. <laughs> You'll take 5 to 10% of your emotional salary, put it in your emotional 401k. Yes. So and just sit on it. Don't touch yeah, it. Yeah, you just want to want to put that in for the long term what's so you've the, got good emotions when you're of retirement age. What's the penalty for early, early withdrawal of my emotional salary? Because <laughs> I've paid in for many, many years of emotional salary and had to you know start at the bottom and stuff and paid a lot of emotional salary. Now I'm to the point where... I think I've maxed out my emotional salary. Don't forget the state, the feds like to take their chunk of emotional taxes out of your emotional salary every uh, every month as well. Whoever wrote this, were they laughing when they posted it? Were they like, hey, watch this. We needed some clicks. I think I just found a way to get them. Now, luckily, this, this woman that quote tweeted, she just did the screenshot. She didn't actually send the tweet because I'm imagining this, this publication is going to go out of business today after posting that. Go to your boss today and say, I'd like you to take some of my money back. I do. I would like uh, weekly uh, pizza parties and happy hours and stuff with the crew. We've talked about that ad nauseum. You can't force chemistry. You just can't. You can't force camaraderie. You can't force chemistry. You can't make people go do it. If they're drawn to it, then they're drawn to it. But if they're not, you can't say you need to be there on the St. Paddy's Day celebration as we all eat corned beef and cabbage Well, I together. mean, there's always going to be coworkers that you just don't really like. Yeah. And being forced to I'm that coworker. hang out and socialize more with them is not going to increase my emotional salary. It's actually going to it's gonna decrease from my it. emotional salary. Yes, that's exactly right, man. That is exactly right. So I thought that uh, was a nice little, <laughs> nice little piece this morning for you to gnaw on uh, for a while. But I'm good. I'm full of emotional salary. We pay Paul an emotional salary. He returns the favor with a Rindle report exactly every right. morning. Thank you, Paul. And get things started here. With our 
edition, today's edition oh, of boy. the Rindle Report. Now tuned into the muff greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biot? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoi? All right. All right. People are very curious about who is it specifically that I don't get along with dislike. It's me. I get along with everybody. Right. But I don't really like anyone. You know that's, me. Yeah, that's very yeah. true. You don't even like me or Paul. <laughs> I tolerate us. the two of you. Yeah, it's toleration. That's about it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Adam, tolerate, tolerate Adam yep. pretty well. Yeah. I like, uh, I like J.R. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> It's gonna sound he so fixes good. things. Yeah, he uh, does. Oh, He's good. All right. Uh, <laughs> Unbelievable. Gentlemen, we'll start off uh, a little breaking news in the NFL. Not quite as significant as the actual rule changes impacting the play on the game on the field, like we talked about earlier. But uh, this past year, just a few months ago, we had Christmas fell on a Sunday, and we got a lot of Christmas Day football, and it was so successful. Or was it a Monday? I think it was a Monday, actually. And either way, there were three NFL games on Christmas going up against what's typically the Sunday, NBA. Actually. Day. The other ones were all on Saturday, but they had three on Sunday. Okay, well, Christmas this year is coming up on a Wednesday, which is why I thought it was on a Monday. And the NFL has decided that they're going to play Christmas games this year again, even though it's on a Wednesday. We've never had Wednesday night football. We've got... Monday night football. We've had Thursday night football. You see Saturday football during the playoffs. They added the Friday night uh, yeah, the, uh, Black Friday game. Yep, yep. yep. And now we have Wednesday Christmas Day football. It feels like the NFL is a pretty powerful lobby. Yes. Why don't they just move Christmas to Sunday every year if that's so important? <laughs> December twenty eighth. It was, uh, it was a Monday. December twenty third. Just just move it to the day of the week that you want it to be on the NFL. I, we don't need December twenty fifth to be Christmas every year. I Other holidays move around. I didn't mind the uh, Christmas games. I actually it was a Monday. They had them. three games and they all were branded as like Monday night football games throughout the day. Staggered. So you pretty much had NFL football on all day. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it either. Once a Monday that day. I mean, Allegedly. the NBA is the only people that hates it. They like to monopolize the Christmas Day viewing with like a quintuple header of basketball. My fake bit of I only watch the NBA at Christmas. I didn't watch one single solitary second. The, Don't know that I've watched the second well, of the NBA. that's because you had football to watch no, instead. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, just, like said, it's, it's, it's typically been the NBA's day, Christmas yeah. Day. That's like kind of when the season officially, unofficially starts. The NFL ratings were through the roof. Uh, the, they always are. The Ravens and 49ers played on Christmas Day this past year, and it had over 27 million viewers. That was the second <laughs> most watched Monday Night Football game ever since 1996. So, NBA's like cool, man. Right on. <laughs> like you well, just we had. This is all we had. This is all we had, guys. Thanks, Roger Wolfpack. Kyle. Says, isn't the 25th of December Jesus's birthday? That's what should be important. I mean, yeah, prove it. Well, fact. Oh, are enough. we sure it wasn't the 23rd or 27th? I mean, how accurate are records going back 2,000 years? Not enough. that accurate would be my guess. <laughs> All right. In uh, other news here, just a media member, sports media member getting absolutely dragged for his awful take. Everybody, uh, every every year somebody has this opinion, and, well, it's Mike Greenberg's turn. Did you guys see what he said about UConn yesterday? He said uh, UConn is so good. San Diego State's opponent on Thursday. Yep. That they would make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference of the NBA. Always they were in the here. NBA's Eastern exactly. Conference, would they make the playoffs? I think I'm looking at teams that are eight <laughs> games under 500 in the play-in <laughs> right now. They're Come better than. I'm not doing that. On, I'm not got, doing that, Greeny. I'm not doing that. No. So they're yelling at him because it. Ha I don't know why it happens in football. Like, oh, you know, Alabama could probably compete in the NFL. No, they couldn't. They would get ran off the field by the worst team in the league. Almost certainly. I would like to see it, though. Prove it. Show me the Jets against Georgia. Is it a game? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. The answer is always, 
What does Georgia have? Uh, on, what did they got? 60, 70 guys on a roster? Yeah. How many NFL players are on that roster? 22 players. 10, 22 15. players total, offense and defense. Okay. Probably 10 of them are going to the NFL. Okay, there's going to be 22, 22 NFL caliber players on the other team. Yeah, but they're the Jets. Still. Even the best players in college that get drafted and go on to the NBA rarely are stars. NFL. Or NBA? NBA are rarely stars right away. They usually need a couple of years of seasoning. Uh, yeah, even guys like LeBron and Kobe, they needed some time. They, they would have dominated college basketball, especially as juniors and seniors. There's no way on earth UConn even comes close. They would be the worst team in the <laughs> NBA by a wide margin. Does anyone watch? I mean, the NBA... They make shots. It's so much yeah. better. College game is very sloppy. My my son actually had a better hypothetical. He said, if you took one NBA superstar, like Giannis, and put them on the worst college basketball team, do they win the NCAA title? Like prime Giannis right now and put them on the University of Pacific <laughs> and go, go. See if you can stop him. Do they win the call. They win. Do they the win NCAA? the NCAA title? Yeah, probably. With Maybe, prime yeah. Giannis Maybe. and just a bunch of whatevers around him. Probably. Maybe they, that. There's a better chance of that happening <laughs> than UConn making the yeah. playoffs I mean, in the NBA. Gre I'll tell Gre you that. Greeny was getting absolutely dragged. <laughs> Chandler Parsons said uh, the best player on UConn wouldn't play on the Pistons right now. The Pistons are. Yeah. I just pulled it up. Uh, they are 12 and 60. Yeah, Tim makes a point. Every year, same old trope. That's why I hate sports radio sometimes. It's because you run out of ideas. And you're like, let's do Mount Rushmore. Who's the greatest San Diegan? You know, like it just. I, it, it, for Mike Greenberg to do that. It's fine to make a joke. Better. UConn's very, very good. The Eastern Conference is pretty down this year. Little joke. Ha ha. Funny. But to actually try to argue to that, it's, that it's true, it's there's just. I the don't line. think there's any way you Again, can argue that. UConn, uh, they're starting five. Maybe has. Two NBA players, probably not starters either. Like the right. line has moved, and, and they wouldn't be that good yet as NBA players. Right? They would get they give them they give them a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Klingon is going to be great. He's had a great season, but right now, no, they get absolutely bodied. You see that the NBA guys, they're all they're all Jaden Ladee plus. Jay, yeah, hundred percent. Right? Every, every single one Jayden of them in the would NBA get pushed around. and can yeah. shoot lights out. Yeah, uh, the line has moved to plus eleven for the Aztecs. It was nine and a half yesterday. Hmm. Now plus 11. A lot of money on UConn. A lot of money on UConn. Right. Speaking of a lot of money, leads me to our last story today. They had uh, a lot of people talking about the Heritage Auctions treasures from Planet Hollywood event this yes, week. Yes, saw that. And there was a lot of uh, notable memorabilia that was sold at auction, including uh, it's probably highlighted by The Door from Titanic. That Somebody Kate bought Winslet the door that she hogged, floated away on yeah, and, let, and watched her love let, of her life die. Yes, uh, but did you see how much it went for at auction? It was like five hundred grand. More than that, my friend. Seven fifty. Seven eighteen. Seven eighteen. The seven hundred and eighteen thousand uh, dollars. I got for... seven eighteen. Seven hundred eighteen thousand. Do I hear seven hundred twenty? Seven hundred eighteen going once. Seven hundred eighteen going twice. Sold. Seven hundred eighteen thousand dollars. I can't believe we made it six years today. <laughs> Six years of this. <laughs> That's a good run. Is this an online auction or a live auction? I don't know how they did it, but there uh, was a uh, the bowling ball from Kingpin with the rose in it. Yeah, sold for three hundred and fifty thousand. I said on Twitter, I would have paid double. It's the best. <laughs> They thing had of um, all time. Harrison Ford's whip from Temple of Doom went for over five hundred thousand dollars. Wow, half a mil. <laughs> uh, this Planet one, Hollywood's defunct. This right? one made it doesn't me laugh. exist anymore. Is I that saw right? this is completely off topic. I was reading something. So Harrison Ford, when they were filming Raiders of the Lost Ark, the iconic scene, the guy with the giant sword and, you know, he, he, shoots, he shoots him. him. Yeah. So apparently Harrison Ford had dysentery while they were shooting. Oh. And like he could only be away from the bathroom for like two minutes and he couldn't do a huge fight scene. So they just improvised. Just he improv. Just that. shoot him. Just <laughs> like, boom. well, I mean, that was the, they, they improv the last second him. instead of doing the fight. Just pull out your gun and shoot him. Ended up being one of the most iconic scenes ever in any movie and that was because harrison ford had to poop was yeah had to go to the bathroom <laughs> yeah. wonder if he folds or wads <laughs> always comes back uh toby mcguire's black spider-man suit from spider-man 3 went for one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. as did jack nicholson's axe from the shining oh 125 that's it yeah for that um, oh my god if i had money it, it, my Park. house would look ridiculous I, I, oh, okay. if i had money i, I disagree 
the oh. like the bowling ball. Oh, I love you it. You see that anyone who knows the movie knows it. If you put like an axe up on your wall, it's just going. It just looks like an axe. I would have a thing. This You'd is the axe frame. from the shining. It's like a picture the of frame the movie. The picture, yeah. yeah. Okay. The axe would be so cool to have. The most bizarre one on this list was easily from Jurassic Park, the original. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the can of shaving cream that Wayne Knight used. He had the the DNA inside of it, the hidden Barbasol can. Smuggle the yeah. Two fifty. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Man, that's awesome. I want that ball. Paul, now it was donated. I saw by Woody Harrelson. Oh, was it? And like originally to the Planet Hollywood. So it feels like now that they're all selling them, who's making all this money? Are they done now, Planet Hollywood? Is I, it defunct? I don't know. There's no, they don't exist anymore, right? I think you can't go to Planet Hollywood like anymore. The restaurant? Yeah, like like it's Hard Rock Cafe. Right next to the Rainforest Cafe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never a fan. I know you weren't either. <laughs> go to Seven Mile. Out, the, the patio reminds me of a Rainforest Cafe That's true. a little bit. And you get the uh, buffet that you, that guy. This is a Planet Hollywood in L.A. that... Opens at noon. Oh, all right. Still around. Well, we can still make it if we hurry. Thank you, Paul. Do a live broadcast. Let's go to break. All right. love we're going to go to break. Check traffic. Come back. A little more Ben and Woods going until 10 o'clock this morning here on 97.3 The Fan.
six years. Ago. So I was uh, um, I was scanning uh, actually on ESPN.com. David Schoenfield, who is always a, a good guest when we have him on, was talking a little bit of, of Dodgers and speculating what the different outcomes could be for the 2024 Dodgers. And have you heard the game uh, Out of the Park Baseball? It's not... It's not MLB the show, but it's uh, oh. it's another. It's a mobile yeah. game, isn't it? Yeah, There's it's. A uh, it's uh, I think it's like desktop uh, oh. as well. You can get it either either way, but you can simulate entire seasons of Major League Baseball by okay. putting in all the players and the stats and everything. So you have to load it in. Uh, no, I think it's already pretty oh. much loaded for you. <laughs> that so sounds terrible. So David Schoenfield and ESPN Schoenfield. Why do I keep saying Schoenfield? I, I really I don't only had him on about a hundred times. I know, times. I know. David Schoenfield and it's ESPN. Ben <laughs> <laughs> trying to determine how the Dodgers would do simulated different outcomes for the Dodgers, yeah. you know, based on oh, Freddie Freeman has a good year. Freddie, Freeman, he, so they have ten different outcomes, and sometimes they win the World Series, sometimes they don't, sometimes they have really bad seasons. But interestingly, in two of the simulations, in one of them, he has the. Minnesota Twins end up beating the Padres in five games in the World Series after the Dodgers lose to the Braves in the NLDS, and then the Padres go on and win the World or get to the World Series, but lose to the Twins, where Byron Buxton was the MVP of the series. And then in the very next, the very next uh, simulation in which y- Yashinobu Yamamoto struggles during the year, the Dodgers barely make the playoffs, lose to the Cardinals in the Wild Card Series. And in the World Series, the Padres beat the Yankees in seven, <laughs> and Xander Bogarts ends up as the MVP oh. of the World Series in this scenario. Okay. So two of the scenarios they ran ended up with the Padres in the World Series. With one of them, they win the whole thing in seven games. Now, it's statistical, it's it's models, and you know there are different factors that they plugged in. And certainly would help if the Yamamoto has a bad season to even things out a little bit. He's off to a good start. In the NL West, but yeah. yeah, it wasn't a great first appearance, so it's certainly within the realm of possibility that that adjustment doesn't go well. Now, if he continues to struggle, does that mean the Padres are definitely winning the World no. Series in seven over the Yankees? No. No, there's a lot of variables that they can't account for over the course of a regular season, but saw that this morning, clicked on it, saw Padres win World Series in seven, and I go, well, well I'll take that outcome this season. No doubt about yeah no questions asked there's actually a much wider range of outcomes i think for the san diego Padres, perhaps this season than than really any other season i can remember going into the year what do you say well i mean take last year for instance i i we were all shocked at how poorly the padres did finishing at 82 and 80 but this year there's not a lot that would shock me if you told me the Padres ended up getting to the playoffs and, and ma- making a run in the That's postseason, fair. I'm not going to be like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. What happened? They they, yeah. they made the playoffs? No, I, I'll just say, okay, things went pretty well. They stayed healthy. Guys, you know, the Stars had good seasons. Like and if, then, if the A's made the playoffs, we'd be shocked. It'd be the most shocking right. thing that ever but happened But it's not going to be that history. shocking if the Padres do. But Correct. if you also told me Padres won 73 games. I know. Things went bad. Injuries, you know. The outfield never materialized. The pitching staff fell apart. It's not like I'm going to be completely shocked either. There's yep. no way that no, this team could finish with a losing record. I mean, it's just so it scary. could make the playoffs and win the World Series. And like last year was shocking that they only won 82. Most years in Padres history, I'm a Padres fan. I would have been shocked if they made the playoffs. Yeah, shocked even sometimes if they had a winning record in many of the seasons. But this year, there's a very wide range of outcomes that are quite. Feasible and believable for the San Diego Padres this year. Yeah, the breaks, uh, the breaks that did not go our way last year, really at all. And you know, listen, you make you make your own luck a lot. You know, you don't want to get have to get down to extra inning games, right? You don't want to have to. You don't want to be in a position to where you can lose twelve straight extra inning games. You don't don't get there by hitting with runners in scoring position early. Uh, you know, moving guys over, getting guys in, sacrifice flies, whatever, whatever that you guys didn't do last year. Um, it's also not going to surprise me, it, you know, if they're dead five hundred. I mean, like you said, there's a ton of different outcomes. But like the Dodgers, the if they don't make the playoffs, uh, I'm going to be flabbergasted. That is, that would be flabbergasted. The flabbergasted. Braves, you know, the Braves don't make the playoffs. Pretty shocked. Pretty shocked. It really scares me heading into the season. And you mentioned it last night on our our YouTube member stream. Yep. Is 
injuries. Like, catastrophic. You, you catastrophic. feel like you're one starting pitcher going down, one outfielder going down from like the whole season just spiraling. Hundred percent. Point man. because we have no, we don't have and, a lot. And of there's depth. a lot of teams that are vulnerable. There's very, very few teams that aren't vulnerable to a, a rash of injuries. I mean, the Dodgers have overcome them in recent years. I'm talking like one but. starting pitcher goes down, and all of a sudden it's like, well, there goes. There goes any shot. I don't know that that's true. I mean, if that's it's how it feels. I mean, if it's all season and it's early, that's not going to help. But with the with potentially guys like Snelling and Mazur and some of the younger guys coming up later in the year, it's possible that they could overcome some pitching injuries. The outfield does have me at least somewhat worried. I mean, if if Fernando Tatis Jr. was was just, out just, for a, 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 a good period of time. You'd be relying on a Jacob Marcy to come up, and maybe he'd have a solid rookie year, but there just doesn't seem to be a lot of depth at the moment in the outfield. So that that's probably the area where I'd worry most about significant injury. Yeah, that, uh, certainly. The volatility of a bullpen, you know, and with with a new manager. Um, Everyone's worried about volatility of a sure, bullpen. Absolutely. It, it happens. Um, I, I You know, you see what Brito came, was able to do last night coming in and throwing really well. Estrada was a little bit wild. But was man, he was humping it up there. Kolek looked, Kolek looked, good. looked pretty good. So do you feel like there's a there's a couple of more arms in case you need them? And the difference I think is maybe potentially quality of arms. You know, last year when a guy went down, again, I hate to I always bring him up and he's a nice guy. I've met him and talked to him. Reese Kinnear's a good kid, but he's a four A pitcher. You know, really, that's that's I think what he is. Um, you know, Camarena, another guy I absolutely love. But do you want to count on those guys for big innings uh when guys get hurt? Probably not. Now with the depth of Vasquez and like you said, don't know if Snelling's ready, don't know if Lesko's ready, but the potential of having arms of that caliber you know, come up would be pretty solid uh, for this team and, and may be able to keep them afloat. Outfielders, though, man, like, whew, boy. Uh, one more bat to this lineup could be could be pretty great. Um, just... and, and A.J. said, as recently as last week, still talking, both free agents and trade possibilities out there that he's not done at least discussing additions to the roster. But it's also clear that he's not simply going to, you know, bash someone over the head with money to make sure they sign with the San Diego Padres at this point. He's right. got to be careful. He's got to be wise with the remaining dollars. But he continues to look into it. And my guess would be the focus has got to be adding another bat, likely an outfielder, if they can do something. Well, and somebody made the point, too. So is the infield deep? Eh. Not particularly. It's not. I mean, you're going into the season with a bench of Higashioka, who's not. He doesn't hit a the ton. whole team. Every aspect of the team is lacking depth. Correct. And then you got you got Higashioka, you've got Eggy Rosario, you've got Tyler Wade, who's probably your starting third baseman on on opening day on Thursday because well he's left handed and you know plays. You in feel the... good about Tyler Wade at the moment. Do you? I yeah, mean, for the moment you know, it's fine. He's fast. Yeah. You know, he got speed. Got speed kills. Uh, and then who else? Sugar. It's not your, not the scariest bench in town, um, not your scariest outfield in town, certainly. But again, you have enough superstars where they get the job done. You should be okay. But we said that last year, so I think that's why everyone's a little bit on on edge about mm-hmm. it, and would feel much better with one more bat in this lineup. Would be great. All right, final segment of Ben and Woods is coming up. Final roster decisions still need to be made. Uh, the last couple of spots. Do you hold one out for a rule? We just mentioned Stephen Kolek. Do you take the gamble on a Rule 5 draft pick? And and all of that entails. Uh, let's talk about that when we come back. Ben Woods on 97.3 The Fan.
So as I mentioned, this is still a season where the Padres are trying to make the playoffs, you know, hopefully make a run to the World Series. Yet they are considering, and we should know in the next few days whether or not they're going to try to pull it off, keeping a Rule 5 pitcher in their bullpen. And remember the Rule 5, the rules of Rule 5, once the Padres drafted Stephen Kolek away from the Seattle Mariners, the only way they can keep him is if he remains on the big league roster for the entire season. I mean, other than getting hurt and, and going on the injured list, can't send him down to AAA. If he's struggling, you just have to wear it and either use him in situations that are low leverage or just not use him at all. Matt Carpenter style in the back of your bullpen. Hard to do Just that rotting away in this day and age. You need all eight of your, you get 13 pitchers, five starters, eight relievers. You need all eight of them to get through the season. So you'd be relying on a guy with no big league experience in the bullpen all season long, and you can't send him down, option him at all. Now, Stephen Kolek has done everything humanly possible Literally hasn't given to up make a run this yet. a hard decision <laughs> on the San Diego Padres. He's looked really good, pitched again yesterday, and looked really good. So it's not a matter of whether you think Kolek deserves an opportunity. He probably does. Well, if he sucks, just boot him. <laughs> like you ever? can do that. Yeah. You can start the season with him, and if it's not going well, you yeah. just offer him back to the Mariners a month in. I don't think that's much of a hand wringer, in the, my opinion. The problem is, even if it goes well, even if he's pitching pretty well through the course of the year, at some point you like to have those options where – you send one guy down, like he pitches three days in a row. Yeah. You send him down so you can bring up a fresh can't arm. You can't do that with him. It kind of ties the hands a little bit of AJ, the general manager, when you're trying to put a roster together to keep even a successful Rule 5 draft pick in your bullpen, particularly over the course of a season. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's definitely an issue, certainly. But they're going to have to manage all of the guys with options, uh, like that, this is nothing new for them. They've always had to figure out. Oh, okay. When do we do the old tired shoulder fifteen day, ten day IL? You know what I mean? Like there's there's ways. Which, by the way, MLB trying to crack down on. Sure. Uh, you know, Billy Epler got what suspended for a year for doing that exact same yep. thing. Fall guy with the uh, the New York Mets last yeah, 100%. year. Hundred percent wasn't working in baseball at the time. But message sent. Message sent to, to everyone, including AJ Preller. Yeah. Is that worth it? Will Stephen Kolek be on the team going forward. I mean, if he, if he stays effective as he has been, there's no reason he can't just be in the bullpen. And that's the one of the challenges for Mike Schilt and Skip Schumacher and Dave Roberts. And uh, really every manager out there is knowing what roles, you know, if you're the, if you're the Astros right now, you're like, I've got Josh Hader in the ninth. I got Ryan Presley in the eighth and I need to figure out innings one through seven beyond that. I mean, there's a few teams that have it locked down like that. The Dodgers are probably one of them to be honest, but there's a, there's few teams that have it locked down with, this is my seventh. This is my eighth. This is my ninth. That's what Mike Schultz going to have to figure out over the next couple of weeks. Who can he trust and when? Speaking of messages targeted potentially at AJ Preller, hadn't brought this up yet, but saw a story out of Japanese media yeah, yesterday. Yeah, dude, is this is this legit? I'm not a hundred percent sure, but the reporting that I saw on on social media was that Major League Baseball is now barring teams from having like official working relationships with NPB teams, which had been allowed in the past. Like you can, you know essentially uh, borrow employees and have, like, you know, official ties with the team. Like, yeah. hey, they're kind of our team in Japan, and we've got representatives that work with them, and they work with us. And the reason they're doing that is because apparently some teams, maybe even the Padres, have targeted certain teams yeah. that employ players that they might want to sign later on that are going to be coming to the United States, say like a, uh, a Roki Sasaki yes. and have formed official ties. So while you can't, you can't approach and negotiate with a player before they are either posted by their team or they come over in the international signing period and the signing window. Apparently, if you have a working relationship with maybe some of the employees of that team, messages can be conveyed like, Oh, I've heard from our Padres fans that they're really interested in you and you can't really stop that when they have an official working relationship. So according to this report out of Japan media yesterday, Major League Baseball is cutting that off to try to avoid the legal tampering with players in 
NPB, J- Japan's Pro Baseball League, before they come over to the United States. Is this so? This is true. This is I don't. True... I mean, this is reported in Japan. I haven't seen American-based reporting or an announcement for Major League Baseball. Yeah, yet. I would think that that if it is true, I saw the same tweet yesterday and and wondered, oh man, like you would hate to think that that you know. It's on the radar. I mean, this is uh, apparently the the issues uh, that were mentioned in that tweet, Ben, were the way that Yamamoto's recruitment went from the Dodgers and, of course, Roki Sasaki's recruitment from most teams, but notably the San Diego Padres, whose general manager just dropped his name in a uh, memorial for the, our deceased owner. And I, I just went, wow, the timing of that is certainly very odd since we just had that deal go down over the weekend, and now they're saying, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's raise the red flags on this thing. So I I need Jeff Passan to write an article about it. I need Eno Saris to write an article about it. And then I think we could dive headlong into it uh, because that's that would be pretty, pretty interesting, the timing of all that. Now, with the the relationship with you, Darvish, you can't. You can't undo that. You can't you undo Darvish a is already his right. mentor and his friend, and he works for the Padres. So you can't really undo that. The bell, if it's if it's rung, has probably already Just been rung from, at this point. From now on, but from this point on, let's uh, no more ties with the NPB teams. Wow. This hour on 97.3 The Fan is brought to you by your local San Diego County, the UPS store. Your local San Diego County, the UPS store locations are hosting a shred event from March 27th, that's tomorrow, through March 30th. 50% off shredding services. Visit the upsstore.com for the location nearest you. See store for details. So we have both a Padres starting rotation and a starting lineup for you for today's exhibition finale against the Mariners. We will give you both. Right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danek. Traffic is sponsored by Soapy Joe's. Got a few problems along the 15. One of them is this crash on the Mirror Mesa Boulevard on ramp to northbound 15. Further north on the 15, just before the 78. Two vehicle accident over the right shoulder. One of those vehicles happens to be a semi. Also traveling on southbound 15, just past Deer Springs Road. Collision blocking the two left lanes. Chief Bubble Officer Tony Gwynn Jr. offers some exciting news. Soapy Joe's newest location is now open on Cuyamaca Street in Santee. Come and join the Wash Club to get unlimited washes. Come drive in today at the all-new Soapy Joe's on Cuyamaca in Santee. Soapy Joe's is good, clean fun. I'm Kelly Danick with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So, Woods, our speculation yesterday about potentially flipping the top two in the starting rotation, giving you Darvish the international first game and Joe Musgrove the domestic first game. Was off base. Yep, uh, as Mike, usual. Mike Schilt announced his starting rotation yesterday, and with very matter of factness, when he announced you Darvish as his opening day starter, and some of the members of the media who were thinking like us said, "Oh, uh, uh, what, what, what's going on? Why?" And Mike Schilt was pretty much, "Well, he started the first game for us." <laughs> In Japan, why wouldn't he start the first game for us here in the United States? Which <laughs> makes a lot of sense, you know, when you put it that way. I mean, there's no reason to change your starting rotation after two games. I will never tire of that drop, by the way, ever. So, it will never get old to me. So it's good. gonna be. It could win next year. So it's, <laughs> it's incredible. The, yeah, the last the little la- <laughs> added at the end. Stop. And one more at the end is great. So Hi, it'll be. This is Mike Shield. <laughs> <laughs> this will be uh, you, Darvish, on Thursday. Yep. Joe Musgrove will start game two, as he did uh, in Japan. And then Dylan Cease has been named your game three starter. Game four will be, of course, Michael King. Michael King. Yep. And game five will be Matt Waldron. Yes. Now, uh, it should also be noted, there's some significant rain in the forecast for this weekend. Oh, boy. Don't know that games three and four of the Dodge, uh, the Giants series will be played. Is game three uh, supposed to be an evening game? It's, I think it's an afternoon. You tell me. Because I think the rain is coming later in the day, potentially on Saturday, and then more Saturday, rain on Sunday. So 4-15, the late afternoon and game. And then And then the one ten Sunday. Sunday start could definitely be impacted by the weather that's coming yeah, our way. Yeah, I saw. San Diego rain out. I saw. I mean, it's so rare, right? I uh, I saw it's like 80%. Now, you know, you don't know the severity of it. They'll try to get these games in. Certainly, you can move games back. Um, it's you just, may have an Easter egg hunt impacted on Sunday morning. It's a good call. Like my kids, they'll go out in the rain. They don't care. Well, so will we. For an Easter egg hunt, for sure. Yeah. yeah. You we, don't move it indoors? No. Oh, we could. Could move it indoors. Yeah. Not as fun, but um, yeah, whatever. We'll, we'll adjust. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 
Now, I, this early in the season, there's a lot of games that get impacted by weather, and there's plenty of time to make them off, yep. uh, off days. You don't even need to schedule double headers. usually. My guess would be you just bump everyone back a day or two if necessary, and you eventually would make up those. Now, the Giants only come twice now with the, with the way they've changed the schedule. This will be one of they're two visits enough, to though. San Diego. Yeah, they're close. But they, you would think that they'd share some common off days yeah. at some point that you'd be able to – to make up at least one, if not two. And, uh, you know, we know the weather here well enough that my guess is they're going to get at least one of those weekend games. They don't, do they move games up ever, or is it just back? They have moved games up. Have they moved they games up? To, to beat weather. Yeah, to beat weather. It, it's, ha- it's rare, but it does happen. 9 a.m. Saturday, Saturday morning. They definitely moved up a celebration of life to they beat did? the weather. Yeah. It worked out perfectly. Yeah. On Saturday. Give so, me the uh, lineup for today. So here's Certainly the, uh, there couldn't be many regulars the in the last. exhibition finale lineup. And we speculated earlier, probably going to be a lot of the youngsters. Give those guys a, a day off for this uh, last day before opening day. Nope. Uh, it's pretty much a, a lineup filled with regulars again. Xander Bogarts leading off playing second base. And I think you can put him in ink in that spot to start the season. Indeed. Fernando Tatis Jr. batting second in right field. Jake Cronenworth hitting third and playing first base. Manny Machado, designated hitter, batting fourth. Ha Sung Kim, the shortstop, batting fifth. Jerickson Profar, left field, batting sixth. That's your one through six, at least against right-handers that we've seen from Mike Schilt consistently over the last week, week and a half, including two real games. So there, there's your lineup. And then Kyle Higashioka catching, batting seventh. Eggy Rosario batting eighth and playing third base. And Jackson Merrill in center field. Batting ninth. So no big changes from what we saw in Korea. Hi, this is Jackson Merrill. Hey, no Jackson. changes from um, the exhibition games that we've seen at the end. Mike Schilt seems like he's pretty comfortable with the lineup that he's putting out there. One A-B. That's it. Yeah, you could pull some of those guys yeah. early in the game. Just just one A-B. Where's Graham Pauly? Why isn't he getting... Uh, that? I think that continues the speculation. Will Pauly truly be on the opening day roster? Or will he get sent down to the minors for more work as opposed to just being a backup to Wade and Rosario at third base and a utility guy who comes in at the end of the games? I just don't think he can do that. I don't either. It's a developer guy. I just, I mean, what do I know about developing And Mike Schultz seems pretty clear. He's not starting him. Didn't start him in Korea. It's not even starting him in one of these two exhibition, exhibition yeah. games. I'm I'm still leaning toward Graham Pauly gets sent down triple A or yeah, double A for sure for for more work, but it wouldn't be the first time that Mike Schilden and AJ Preller have surprised me when it comes to some of these uh, some of the moves that they're making. But that's your lineup for the exhibition finale, and we are carrying that game, correct? You're on ninety seven three, the fan. Yes, it's a uh, one ten first pitch today. No pregame show, so correct. We'll have three hours of Annie and Elston, and then we'll get right into Jesse and Tony for the final spring training game. And I guarantee you that no one is happier about that than Jesse and Tony getting done with fake games. It must be hard to call a real game, two of them, and then have to come back and call two more fake games. Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, think about playing and getting up for two real games and then coming home and not getting up for fake games. And that's exactly what they are. They're fake games. These are scrimmages. They are scrimmaging. After having records and batting averages and everything else, this is a scrimmage. You kind of have to do it just to make sure pitchers continue to get their game work in. You really wouldn't want to then all of a sudden just go a week without playing. Hundred percent, man. But I, you know, the thing that they're the up and in off the wrist or something. I mean, that's just the the risk that you run. Now, listen, it could easily happen on opening day, but you can explain that away on opening day if somebody wears one in the wrist on opening day and they're out for two weeks. Well, yeah, of course I'm going to start him. He's our starting shortstop or whatever. James quickly asked any update on when Manny could be back at third. Mike Schilt did give. Oh, did he? He did give an update yesterday. He He's, said. The throwing continues. Um, he is starting to put those together, the swinging and the throwing. Okay. And he thought in about two weeks, they'll see where they're at and, and see <sighs> how close Manny is to returning. So that was the update yesterday from Mike Chilby. He says, no, no setbacks. Everything's been going well for Manny the last couple of weeks in terms of progressing on the throwing. Hasn't had, you know, hasn't had to shut it down again like he did during spring training. So he's working towards sometime probably within the first month of the season hopefully being back at third base All right, for the well, Padres. Listen, if you're the praying type, make sure you pray for safety and uh, health for the guys today. Nothing 
stupid happens, uh, you know, a couple days before opening day. And uh, everyone goes out and has a nice, crisp, clean game and gets their rest because that trip has, has to have zapped them pretty good uh, coming back. I heard on a trip like that, it's actually like three or four days when you get back. That's when you're the most gassed. So perfect timing to, this uh, is it. to run, really, the, really run well the regulars done. out there, guys. I'm, you know, listen, I don't want to have to come in here tomorrow and talk about something I don't want to talk about. All right, tomorrow. It's our anniversary. Our six-year anniversary Ooh. of the Ben and Woods program on the air. Seven-year itch officially starts tomorrow. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. We'll start looking at other projects. Itchy. Maybe a little itchy. All right, that'll do it for us, for our executive producer, imaging director, Paul Rindle, for Stephen Woods. I'm Ben Higgins, Annie and Elston coming up next. Have a great rest of your Tuesday from all of us here at 97.3 The Fan. So long. <laughs>